The Protector Chapter 461 Since Levi isn't that easy to sabotage, I'll let Fernand do the dirty work for me. Fernand's eyes sparkled when he saw the pictures. How is she so beautiful? It's the first time I've seen someone as pretty as her. Fernand exclaimed in surprise. Zachary grinned. Mr. Yates, I guarantee that she's even prettier in real life. All right. I'll leave this to you. Bring Helena and her to me. Lust started to overwhelm Fernand's senses. Sebastian joined their conversation. Mr. Yates, I'll recommend someone to you. As well. The vice president of the Morris Group, Iris Annabelle, is a beauty as... Well... She might not be as pretty as Zoe Lopez, but I assure you that she's a looker. Ha ha ha. I don't care if this Iris is pretty or not. I only want her just because. She's the vice president of the Morris Group. A crazed expression appeared on Fernand's face. Zachary hesitated a little before saying awkwardly, Mr. Yates, I can bring Helena. Engler here but I don't dare to do the same to Zoe Lopez and Iris Annabelle. Because something bad has happened to me before. What a loser. Bones, go with him. Fernand waved his hands. All right, I promise to bring them to you. Zachary guaranteed as a smug smile. Appeared on his face. Helena was the talk of the town lately, she had amassed a following of a few. Million fans. Despite that, she still stayed humble and honed her craft every night. Bang! Suddenly, the door was opened, and an extremely skinny, deathly pale man appeared. Helena trembled in fright. W what do you want? Come with me. Someone wants to have a drink with you. Right as he said that he appeared in front of her, and she lost consciousness. Zoe Lopez and Iris Annabelle are next. Their neighbors. Zachary chuckled. In no time, they appeared at Bayview Garden. Iris had just finished her bath and was reading through some finance news with a tablet. At that moment, a gust of wind blew from the balcony, lifting the curtains. Didn't I close the window? Iris stood up and went to close the window when a pair of emaciated, pale hands suddenly appeared from behind the curtain. Ah! She shrieked in terror. Soon after, Zachary and his colleagues appeared. Nice to meet you, Ms. Annabelle. Mr. Yates extends an invitation to you. Bones. Said coldly. Who's Mr. Yates? I don't even know him. Besides, you're trespassing in my property, and that's illegal. Iris bellowed furiously. I guess we have to do it the hard way. Bones approached Iris in an instant and knocked her out cold. Zoe Lopez is next. A maniacal smile rose from Zachary's lips. As compared to the Morris group, his biggest enemies right now were Levi and Zoe. Zoe needs to be captured, and Levi needs to be killed. This is the best opportunity I have. I'll have Bones kill Levi for me to avenge my brother. Mr. Bones. Things might be a little dangerous from now on, Zachary said. Suddenly with a tinge of fear in his voice. Bones was puzzled. Dangerous. You might not know this, but Zoe Lopez's husband, Levi Garrison is someone. Skilled in combat. The Suarez family has suffered a huge loss because of him. I'm scared to come in contact with him. Zachary trembled as he spoke. Humph. What a piece of garbage. You can't even handle a small fry. Bones. Scoffed. He then walked towards Levi's house. Zachary flashed a bright smile. Got him. Levi, be prepared to face your death. He then caught up to Bones quickly. The Protector Chapter 462 When they entered Levi's house, they realized that no one was there. Hey. Is she not here? Zachary took a look around and he couldn't spot anyone. Where did she go? Go and look for her. Zachary commanded his subordinates. 
Bones waved his hand and said, No need for that. We'll send the two people. Back because Mr. Yates is waiting. All right. I'll bring Zoe with me once I find out where she is. Afterwards, Helena and Iris were sent to the Rogers family's house. Fernand's eyes sparkled with ecstasy when he saw how pretty they were. He thought they were worth his weight. However, he had already come because he couldn't help himself just now. That was why he needed to wait a while longer to be able to rape the two ladies. Mr. Yates, should we go look for Zoe Lopez now? Zachary asked. Fernand replied, Go quickly. We still have time. Incidentally, Levi and Zoe had gone to their parents' place tonight and returned to their house afterwards. Hey? Why did Iris sleep so early tonight? Zoe exclaimed when she saw that. The lights in Iris' room were turned off. Iris would usually keep her lights on until one or two in the morning because she was a workaholic. Some things amiss. Levi had a bad feeling because he had received news from knew that Fernand Yates had come to Northampton. Originally, he didn't dwell on the matter. However, he sensed something was wrong with Iris, so he immediately recalled this piece of information. Honey, go home first. I have something I need to do. After Levi asked Zoe to head back, he arranged for someone to protect her. Azure Dragon immediately drove to pick them up when they stepped out from the Bayview Garden. God of War, Ms. Annabelle has been abducted along with Helena Engler. Fernand Yates is in the Rogers family's mansion right now, and he is committing all kinds of brutalities. Azure Dragon said. Is he powerful? Levi asked. Fernand's father, Scott Yates, is the top figure in Quebec, and the four mighty generals under his command can wipe out a whole army by themselves. Levi listened in amusement and instructed, All right. Ask White Tiger to come. Here. Tell him he's about to square off against powerful opponents. The Black and White Guards were too weak for him, and he's been complaining about that. Ever since. All right. Got it. In the Rogers family's manner. Everyone in the Rogers family was kneeling on the ground while Fernand was patiently waiting as the three mighty generals stood by his side. Who are you? What do you want? Helena and Iris had woken up, and they stared around in horror. Ha ha. Let me introduce myself. I am Fernand Yates from South City. I invited both of you to have a drink with me. Fernand chuckled. Helena was afraid, so she hid behind an iris. Iris, on the other hand, was poised. I don't even know you. Why should I drink? With you. You know me now, don't you? Besides that, Morris Group is about to be ruined. So isn't being with me a better choice now? Fernand grinned. What? The Morris Group is about to be ruined. Iris knew there was bad blood between South City and the Morris group, so she immediately realized they were seeking revenge on them. Is this the Rogers family's manner? Iris exclaimed in surprise when she saw the people kneeling. How strong can this guy be to bring the entire Rogers family down? You're Iris Annabelle, aren't you? Let me tell you something. Iris was dumbstruck when Sebastian told her what had happened to the Rogers family. This Fernand guy is terrible. How dare he humiliate the Rogers family like this? When Fernand saw how shy Helena was and how coy Iris was, he became excited again. He waved his hands to chase everyone out. No, what are you doing? Iris had a sudden realization as she stepped back. Instinctively. The Protector Chapter 463 Thump Fernand threw Helena and Iris on the bed. He was skilled in martial arts, the ladies couldn't fight back. Helplessness flashed in the Rogers family's eyes as they watched the scene unfold. What an impudent person! 
is he really gonna do the deed when so many people are around? I feel so miserable for the two ladies targeted by Fernand. Bang! Crash! At that moment, the manor's door collapsed, and all the windows shattered. The loud noise startled everyone. It caused them to stop in their tracks. Even Fernand, who was about to pounce on the ladies, stopped as he stared at the door. Four people stood by the entrance. Kieran and White Tiger stood beside Levi, who was smoking a cigar. Hey? Levi? From the Morris Group. Are you Neil Atkinson? Zachary and Sebastian Lopez exclaimed with an expression of horror. Hey? What? Someone from the Morris Group. Fernand put on his bathrobe. And approached them eagerly. At the same time, Bones, Titan, and Golem were excited as well. Haha, you really are digging your own grave. Fernand chuckled. Zachary and Sebastian were agitated as well. The people from the Morris group. Finally arrived, but the only fate that awaited them was death. We can finally avenge the Suarez family and the Lopez family. Levi, be prepared to die. Zachary guffawed. Kill them. Fernand waved his hands, and the three mighty generals stepped forward. Glaring at Levi and his posse menacingly. White Tiger took a step forwards and beckoned them to come over by waggling. His finger. Come at me, all at once. White Tiger's smugness shocked everyone. How dare he act so boastfully when facing Fernand and the three mighty. Generals. Die. Titan had the hottest temper out of the bunch, so he roared and pounced on. White Tiger like a ferocious beast first. He was skilled in martial arts, and he had enough strength to kill a tiger with just one punch. Screech. His punch made a very jarring noise. Titan could kill someone with a punch, but White Tiger responded with a punch of his own instead of dodging it. White Tiger's punch seemed weak but maniacal murderous intent and immense. Power were infused in it. When the punch reached Titan, his expression changed drastically. It's so powerful. Wham! Their fists crashed into each other and made a dull noise. Pfft! Blood spurted out of Titan's mouth as his right arm exploded from the impact. Screech! Besides that, he was sent flying by the punch. When he landed on the ground, Blood gushed out from his orifices, and he died on the spot. Killed with just one punch. Everyone was dumbfounded. I'll kill you. Bones was the next one who pounced on White Tiger. He moved as fast as lightning, and one's eyes could barely make out his silhouette from the speed he was traveling at. Whack. However, White Tiger was even faster. He grabbed Bones' wrist. Crack. White Tiger twisted his hand gently and snapped Bone's wrist. Ugh! Bone shrieked. Crack! Afterwards, White Tiger shattered Bone's arms, ankles, and legs. He left Bone's. Lying limply on the ground like a skeleton. Bone's looked absolutely miserable. Die! In the next moment, Golem's bulky stature loomed over White Dragon as he came crashing down. Bang! White Tiger gripped Golem's head and smashed it onto the ground. Bang! 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 After eight consecutive punches, Golem's head was a bloody mess, and a huge dent was imprinted on it. Thump! Golem's colossal body fell on the ground with a resounding thud. White Tiger had defeated Fernand Yates three out of four mighty generals all by himself. The Protector Chapter 464 After White Tiger defeated the three people, he took out a clean handkerchief and wiped his hands. He chuckled. The last guy was pretty sturdy. It took me eight whole punches to kill him. Everyone held their breaths and fell silent because this wasn't what anyone was expecting. After all, those were the infamous killing machines from Quebec. They were even feared by the black and white guards, but they had been defeated by a single man. 
Sebastian finally realized he was mistaken. He originally thought the black and white guards had a drawn-out battle against White Tiger, but now he realized they hadn't even stood a chance against him. On the other hand, Zachary was so terrified he almost peed his pants. Fernand trembled in fear as he stared at White Tiger. No. This is impossible. To Fernand, the four mighty generals were the strongest fighters around, they could never be defeated. However, they had been defeated in an instant by one man. Fernand's assumptions were completely destroyed. You're Fernand Yates, aren't you? Since you came to Northampton, stay here. Forever. White Tiger suddenly kicked Fernand's chest. Pfft. Fernand flew a very long distance and slammed against the wall forcefully. A wide streak of blood formed on the wall, signifying Fernand's demise. Gasp! Everyone was driven insane when they saw the numerous cracks on the wall. Is he even human? This is madness. Total madness. White Tiger smiled, and it seemed like he was pleased by his opponents tonight. He has a stepfather, doesn't he? I hope he's stronger than this. White Tiger had an expectant expression. Everyone in the Rogers family was stunned. He's so powerful. Kieran stared at Sebastian and Zachary and asked, Didn't we tell you that since you came to Northampton, you should stay forever? Kieran's question was a death sentence for Sebastian and Zachary. No one expected Scott's stepson and the three mighty generals to only enjoy their stay here for half a day. They were all dead except for Bones, even he was on the verge of demise. Because a few dozen of his bones had been broken. In the end, Bones couldn't make it to South City alive because he couldn't bear the pain anymore. This was the worst defeat Scott had faced in ten years. On the other hand, Levi brought Helena and Iris along with him. Helena stared at Levi with an expression of gratitude because he turned her from jobless to a superstar. Besides that, not only did he change her life, but he had also saved her today. Too. Because of that, the way Helena looked at Levi was a little different now. How did you know I was here? Iris asked. This was the second time Levi had saved her, even though he didn't necessarily do the dirty work. Zoe saw that the lights in your room were turned off, so I thought something bad happened to you, Levi explained. Iris said somewhat shyly, thank you for saving me again. She now blushed furiously whenever she saw him. If you want to thank someone, thank Zoe instead. After that, Levi sent Helena home first. When she got out of the car, she said shyly to Levi, Levi. I'll repay you soon for saving me today. Meanwhile, in the Rose Gold Manor, South City, Scott was making some tea while Typhoon sat opposite him and remained silent. A monk gave me this packet of tea. I'm reluctant to drink it. Scott grinned. However, not only did Typhoon not talk, but his expression also remained stoic. As well because nothing could ever faze him anymore. Master, we're in trouble. Something really bad has happened. An uproar could be heard from outside at that moment. Scott was displeased. Why the hell are you making so much noise? On the other hand, Typhoon still sat motionless despite the uproar. Master, something bad has happened. Theo, one of Scott's old butlers, exclaimed in shock. Share. The Protector Chapter 465 He had served under Scott for fifty years, so he resembled Scott in demeanor and personality. Theo was never this anxious before, which meant that they were in very big trouble. Scott stood up and asked, Theo, what happened? Master, just take a look for yourself. I, I don't know how to say this. Theo wiped his tears away. Scott soon realized something terrible must have happened, so he rushed out the door. A lot of South City's powerful figures crowded in the opening in the middle of the manor. Corpses were placed in the opening, 
and they were covered with white cloths. What happened? Everyone automatically made way for Scott when he arrived. Sir, please be strong. The head of the Suarez family and the Lopez family said. While they sobbed uncontrollably. Scott shut his eyes helplessly when he heard that. His body trembled, and his outstretched hands hovered around the cloth. Reluctant to uncover it. Typhoon, who stood behind him, stepped forwards and uncovered all seven. Corpses. The corpses of Fernand, the three mighty generals, Sebastian and Zachary. Were revealed. The Suarez family and the Lopez family had already wept for quite some time. But that wasn't the case for Scott. Thud. Scott felt as if his head were about to explode when he saw the body of his stepsons and his subordinates. He broke down completely at that moment. That was the saddest day in the fifty years of his life. He hadn't killed anyone for thirty years already, but now a pang of bloodlust struck him. When Typhoon saw his three partners' bodies, he squinted and exuded an overwhelming menacing aura. Everyone could feel the temperature dropping sharply, and they unwittingly shuddered. Everyone knew something terrible was about to happen. From this day onwards, peace will not visit Quebec again. Even God can't save the people who did this to Scott. Scott never expected that the three mighty generals, along with his beloved stepson, to die. Scott didn't have any children, and his best friend had died to save Fernand, so. Scott had always treated Fernand like his own son. His heart ached now that Fernand was dead. My brother, I couldn't protect your son. It's all my fault. Scott screamed to the heavens. Master, what should we do now? You need to take charge. If not, the Morris group will rule over Quebec. Scott bellowed in rage, Theo, tell this to everyone. Prepare the funerals in three days because I want to send my son and my brothers off with honor. I want everyone in Quebec to know about this funeral. Understood, Master. Secondly, gather all our former subordinates and reinstate them in three days. Thirdly, Inform my twenty-four disciples to come to South City with all their men. Everyone shuddered when they heard Scott's commands. There were thirteen cities in Quebec, and all except Northampton were under Scott's rule. The remaining twelve cities were ruled by Scott's former subordinates or disciples, but they had gone on their own ways since his retirement thirty years ago. Despite that, Scott commanded them to gather within three days to head towards Northampton and ravage the Morris group. No one could imagine what kind of chaos would unfold, but they knew Morris. Group was doomed for sure. The Protector Chapter 466 As soon as the news broke, everyone in Quebec went into a frenzy. Everyone from the upper-class society to the underworld were shocked. Mr. Yates is already causing great commotion the moment he came out of retirement after thirty years. Gathering his former troops and his disciples? The guy must be out of his mind. Something big happened at Quebec. Mr. Yates had been angered. Everyone from the underworld from all thirteen cities in Quebec gathered up there. Men and headed towards South City as soon as the news broke. It was a terrifying scene to see busloads of men being sent to South City. Not only that, but Scott's disciples also were scattered throughout the thirteen cities, and were engaged in various types of occupations. They gathered their forces to prepare for the funeral in three days. Someone estimated that they would be able to gather at least tens of thousands of people in three days. Once again, everyone was shocked. Scott Yates is the real king of Quebec. Even after retiring for thirty years, he barely had to lift a finger to gather an army. Everyone in Quebec was aware of his actions. Even if South City turned a blind eye, it would be hard to deal with Mr. Yates if he is provoked. As long as they don't cause any civil unrest, they were free to organize the funeral however they want. At Mount Amethyst Scott and Typhoon sat opposite of each other. 
Typhoon looked calm and collected as usual, as if he had ceased to concern himself with worldly affairs. As for Scott, his hair turned white overnight, making him look old and aged. Master, people from all thirteen cities in Quebec have gathered. We have eleven thousand people thus far. Not only that, your disciples from several provinces nearby are also on their way. I estimate we will have 13,000 people in. All, Theo reported. Scott nodded in acknowledgement. His gaze landed on Typhoon and said, In the past, I've always tried to quell your bloodthirstiness because I didn't want you to be inhumane and ended up like a beast. Typhoon kept quiet. His bloodthirstiness had indeed toned down over the past 30 years. But now, Someone is forcing our hand. Typhoon, it's time to pick up your sword. Again. I want you to start killing. As many as possible. Scott said viciously. Theo, who was at the side shuddered at his tone. This was the first time Scott had asked Typhoon to go on a killing spree. In the past, he was worried that Typhoon would kill too many people. However. He was asking Typhoon to kill as many as he could now. This was enough indication to show Scott's fury. The death of Fernand and the others had struck a nerve within him. Typhoon lifted his eyes and said hoarsely, I will make everyone in North. Hampton join them. Boom. Theo was scared out of his wits that he started to break out in cold sweat. No one could stop Typhoon if he were to go all out. This time round the city streets would surely be bathed in blood. The number one mass murderer of Quebec will stop at nothing. God knows how many people would perish by his hands this time round. Meanwhile, Levi who was in Northampton flashed a thin smile when he received the news. Ha, someone dares to gather an army right under my nose. Are they trying to die? Azure Dragon and Kieran gave each other a look and exclaimed, God of War, it didn't occur to us that Scott would be so powerful. He managed to gather so many people in three days, and the numbers are still growing. He certainly is Quebec's number one. Compared to him, Jack and Liam seemed too weak. This is what a real boss looked like. Levi smiled and said. On the flip side, White Tiger was looking forward to it. He smiled and said. I heard there'll be a lot of professionals coming. I can't wait. Others would think that White Tiger was out of his mind if they heard him. The Protector Chapter 467 However, everyone who knew him well enough knew that he was a total psycho. Not to mention a killing machine. It's not like he had never faced tens of thousands of people by himself before. At that moment, Glenn hastily rushed over. Mr. Garrison, this will be tricky. No matter how powerful you are, things will still be dangerous if these people unleash their madness. Tens of thousands of people coming right at us all at once, it feels scary just to think about it. Glenn shivered at the thought. Nonetheless, Levi said in a relaxed manner, Glenn, prepare a coffin to be sent to the funeral. Hey? What do you mean, Mr. Garrison? Glenn was confused. Wouldn't sending a coffin to Scott be provoking him? What is it? Are you questioning me? Levi said. I wouldn't dare. I will arrange for it immediately. Cold sweat broke out on Glenn's forehead. After Glenn left, Levi asked, Where is the cavalry regiment? They're currently located at the Northwest Great Desert, sir. Phoenix said. I hereby summon the cavalry regiment to come to Northampton tomorrow. Levi said coldly. It was at that moment, Azure Dragon and Kieran knew Levi was serious about it. This time. Everyone knew that Levi's personal army is the Invincible Iron Brigade. However, few were aware that Levi had personally built several small troops. Which were invincible as well. For example. The cavalry regiment was formed of 18 powerful professionals. They were the embodiment of destruction. Once, 
Levi led the cavalry regiment to war. They annihilated 20,000 people in one night and destroyed a small country with a mere troop of 19 people. These 18 psychos were like a steel knife stabbing right into their enemies. Heart. It was a taboo to even mention the names of these soldiers in the battlefield. Because one will not even be aware when their entire barracks got destroyed. Also, tell Alfie to start moving. He must be out of shape now after having rested. For so long in the South War Zone, Levi said. The Dragon Legion and Iron Brigade troops stationed at the South War Zone got really excited as soon as news broke. They could finally let off steam after holding it in for two or three months. Alfie quickly gathered everyone. Listen up. We have an important mission in three days. Moreover, we will be fighting alongside the god of war. Alfie shouted. Boom. Upon hearing that they would be fighting alongside the supreme god of war, everyone went into a frenzy of excitement. They were so excited that every single one of them teared up. This is such a rare opportunity. Please don't embarrass me on the battlefield. I hope we will be able to settle everything without having the god of war and his guards lift a finger. Alfie yelled. At the top of his voice. Can you promise me that? Yes, everyone shouted at the top of their lungs. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Let's all do well in this mission. Show them the Dragon Legion's wrath. We must. Let the God of War know we can still be at our best even when we're out of our element. Alfie shouted enthusiastically, so much that his voice turned hoarse. The Dragon Legion is invincible. The Dragon Legion is invincible. The outcry of these soldiers shook the heavens and earth. Everyone in the South War Zone were stunned. Their ruthlessness is terrifying. Is something going on since they have been assigned a mission? Everyone in the South War Zone were trying to find out what was happening. The Iron Brigade were supposed to be on break. It must be something big since. They're being mobilized. The Protector Chapter 468 Inside South War Zone's Commander-in-Chief's Office the Commander-in-Chief, Vice-Commanders-in-Chief, and a few higher UPS each sat on their seats with their brows tightened. Commander-in-Chief has no idea what is going on. There are no battles in Quebec or in the nearby provinces. Yet. I've tried asking Alfie but he said it's top secret, and instructed personally. By the God of War. I wonder what the commotion is about. A few of them reported. South War Zone's Commander-in-Chief, Mike Pence, sighed, I'm just worried that. The problem is within our territory. I wouldn't want the God of War to settle it for us. When we're not even aware of it. Report, sir, I think I've figured it out. Captain Mortimer said. Well, what is it? Scott Yates from South City has been the talk of the town lately. He has been. Gathering his old troops and his disciples. I heard that he is planning to invade. Northampton, said Mortimer. Oh, I got it. Scott's godson and the mighty generals have stationed themselves. At Northampton. Now that I think about it, who else in Northampton can? Stand against Scott aside from the god of war, one of the vice. Commander-in-chief jumped in. Do you mean that Scott is going to fight the God of War head-on? Mike asked in. Surprise. Exactly. Scott has gathered his old troops and disciples for the sole reason of having his revenge. I bet he doesn't know that he will be facing the God of War, someone else. Chimed in. How presumptuous. How dare he disrespect the God of War. Mortimer. Bring your troops to destroy Scott Yates. The hot tempered Mike said. Angrily. You must not do that, Commander in Chief. The Dragon Legion are already in the midst of preparation. This means that the God of War wants to deal with Scott. Personally. We must not overstep our boundaries, someone else advised. That makes sense, but keep an eye out on the situation. 
resolve the matter. Immediately if anything unusual occurs. First Division, 89th Division, and the rest of the legions should be prepared for what is to come. Mike. Commanded. Yes, sir. There was only one day left before the funeral. Approximately 8,000 people had gathered at Mount Amethyst, and the numbers were still growing. Meanwhile, at the meeting hall stood a group of people. This group of people consisted of the 13 leaders from Scott's former troops. And about 10 of his disciples. One of them was a guy wearing a gold-rimmed glasses called Garfield Perkins. Not only was he very highly regarded by Scott, but he was also the strongest. Among Scott's disciples, the leader of Quebec's third city, Edge City, and the leader of the underworld. Moreover, he had been doing business for the past couple of years, increasing his net worth to tens of billions. Don't worry teacher. I will make them pay with their life regardless of their backgrounds or their capabilities. Garfield said angrily. It's payback time. A thousand people shouted at the top of their lungs. Upon seeing that, Scott nodded, pleased. Theo, relay my orders. Tell all 28 members of the senior management. From Morris Group to attend the funeral at Mount Amethyst tomorrow. They are to act as pallbearers, carry out the burial, and kneel at the cemetery for three days. And three nights to repent for their sins. Kill anyone who is absent. Scott. Instructed. News soon traveled to Morris Group. Iris and the rest of the higher UPS were shocked, especially those who had heard. The rumor that they were about to be invaded by 10,000 people. All of a sudden, everyone in Morris Group flew into a panic. They had gone through many life-threatening situations through years of doing business, but this was the first time someone had threatened them so arrogantly. The Protector Chapter 469 Focus on your work, guys. This has nothing to do with all of you, Levi couldn't help but said angrily. You're right. Let's all just focus on our work. Iris immediately felt reassured at the thought of the impressive individual who had rescued her that night. The next day, Mount Amethyst was decorated in black and white as rows of flower wreaths were placed by the wall. The funeral of the century had attracted a lot of attention, where even the sky was gloomy and the atmosphere was tense. Two men stood in front of the morning hall. One of them was Typhoon, looking cold and indifferent. The other man was Scott, with his bent back and grayish white hair that made him looked older. Nevertheless, his eyes shone bright. He had been in retirement for thirty years now, he was like a ferocious lion who had fallen into a deep slumber. However, today shall be the day that said ferocious lion awakens. A lot of people will perish as a consequence of the lion's awakening. Inside Mount Amethyst's vast space stood South City's elites who came to pay their respect with 13,000 people gathered behind them. Everyone was dressed in a black suit with a white flower pinned to their lapel. And a white headband. It was a majestic sight. No one else in the entire of Quebec could gather a crowd this big. To gather 13,000 people in three days. That was the power of Scott Yates. Everyone in Quebec called him Sir. Angering him was equivalent to angering the heavens. All the powerful families in South City were afraid of him. A lot of people thought that Scott had lost his touch during his retirement period. Some even thought he could be replaced by Sebastian Lopez. But now, it looked like the jokes on them. For who could stand against the omnipotent Scott Yates now? And who could replace him? Scott straightened the white flower on his lapel and said, Ha, I didn't think I'd be meeting all of you in such an occasion. I'd like to thank everyone who came to Send my three brothers and my godson off. Thank you. Scott bowed. Seeing their leader bow down agitated all 13,000 people as anger rose. In their hearts. Sir, sir, everyone shouted emotionally. I'm supposed to be retired, 
but some outsiders provoked Quebec repeatedly. Took over our territory and our property, and even massacred our people. There. Robbing our lives. Today, I, Scott Yates, hereby declare that I will strike down Morris Group with everything I have. Scott exclaimed in a loud voice. Strike them down. Strike them down. An eye for an eye. An eye for an eye. The battle cries of these people shook the heavens. Surely this was enough to make everyone in Quebec tremble in fear. He was too strong. Anyone who stood in Scott Yates' way shall be eliminated. Sir, we have ten more minutes before the funeral starts, all that's left now is. Morris Group. Theo reminded. Scott nodded. Teacher, what shall we do if the people from Morris Group is absent? Garfield. Asked. A gleam flashed through Scott's eyes as he replied, then we will mow Morris. Group to the ground and drag the whole of Northampton down to hell. Understood, teacher. I'd be willing to join the vanguard forces. Garfield took the initiative to volunteer. Excellent. Scott was pleased. He loved this sight of Garfield. The people from Morris Group has arrived. At this moment, a loud voice sounded. Crash. Everyone turned to look at the entrance and were dumbfounded with what they saw. The Protector Chapter 470 What they saw were four men marching and carrying a coffin. Clearly, they were trying to provoke Scott by attending the funeral with a coffin in tow. Everyone felt fury pulsed through their veins. All they wanted at that moment was to shred these four men into pieces. Scott calmed everyone down with a wave of his hand. They watched on in anger as the four men marched to the vast land in front. Bang! The coffin landed heavily on the ground. Greetings, Mr. Yates, I'm here to relay a message from the Master of Morris. Group, the leader of the four men said. Who do you think you are? Garfield said angrily. Since when can some nobody speak to my godfather directly? Never mind, let him speak. Scott said. He hopes Mr. Yates can experience this moment every year from now on. Gasp. Silence filled the air the moment those words left his lips as everyone held their breath. This is unbelievable. To say something like that at a funeral is the worst curse of all. Godfather, I will lead a troop of people to Northampton right this instance and dye the streets in blood. I want to tear everyone from Morris Group into pieces. Garfield was furious. Scott's former troops and his disciples were also boiling with anger. Tear them into pieces. Everyone below could not contain their anger as well. Their actions mimicked a beast who had been freed from its cage. Ha ha ha, Scott burst into laughter instead. Even Typhoon smiled. And it was the rarest of sight. The reason behind Scott's laughter was because it was the first time he had met. Such an impudent fool after ruling for so many years. I have really seen it all now. The younger generation these days sure is cocky. Scott chuckled. Mr. Yates, this coffin is for you. He said you'll need it sooner or later, one of the. Paul Bearer spoke up. Boom. Garfield and the rest of the guests were furious. Their fists were balled tight as. Their eyes filled with rage. They couldn't stand the incessant provocations from Morris Group anymore. Their actions were enough to have anyone and everyone to have the urge to tear. Morris Group into pieces. Damn it. Damn it all to hell. Theo said through gritted teeth. How could they be so cruel? Morris Group is pushing it too far. How dare they provoke us like that? They showed no respect to Sir at all. Garfield balled his fists tightly. He could no longer hold back his murderous intent. Swoosh. Someone from the crowd couldn't hold it in anymore. He rushed forward with his sword pointed at the four pallbearers. I'm going to kill all of you. He swung his sword at them. Bang. However, a huge force knocked the sword out of his hand and broke it in half. 
stand down. Let them leave. Scott said coldly. Typhoon was the one who had broken the sword in half with just a small stone. It was a terrifying display of his capability. In the end, the four pallbearers left. Scott tried to suppress his anger as he said, Let's proceed with the funeral. Send. My brother and my son off on their final journey. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Everyone emptied the glass of wine they had on hand. Crack. Crack. After that, everyone smashed the wine glass on the floor. It was a spectacular sight to see thousands of people doing it together. Sir, should we lower the casket now? Theo asked. No, the leader of Morris Group must be the one to carry and lower the casket. L. E. T. S. H. E. A. D. T. O. N. O. R. T. H. H. A. M. P. T. O. N. Rig. H. T. T. His in. S. T. A. N. C. E. I'm. G. Oin. G. T. O. T. U. R. N. N. O. R. T. H. H. A. M. P. T. O. N. Into a living hell. Scott cried out. The Protector Chapter 471. To war with Northampton. To war with Northampton. To war with North. Hampton. Over 10,000 men chanted fervidly. Every one of them filled with anger and itching to vent their fury. Equipped with swords, they each also had a white flower pinned on their chests. And a white band tied around their heads. And they were all ready to march. The Suarez family, the Lopez family, and all the other famous families knew that. Scott was going all out this time. However, it would not achieve anything other than Scott's death. Before it came to that, Scott may have flattened Northampton and taken revenge on the Morris group. Split into ten groups and head for Northampton. Men, carry the coffins of my brothers and my sons. And don't forget the one that he sent us. Let's march. Scott commanded. Ten thousand men spread out into ten groups and marched zealously towards Northampton. Scott and Typhoon personally led a group. Together with Theo and Garfield, they formed the vanguard. Five coffins followed them with another three thousand men behind. They were all marching towards Northampton. The scene was a magnificent yet terrifying one. They were prepared to kill anyone who stood in their way. It would be wise for anyone who ran into them to hide. Even South City didn't dare stand in their way despite being aware of their plans. Simply because this was a group of fanatics, and there was no stopping them. Whoever that tried would have to pay a heavy price. Furthermore, they didn't receive any communications from Northampton. Hence, it would be unwise to take any action on their own. The other nine groups went in vehicles, forming a large convoy towards North. Hampton. Their mission was simple. Before Scott arrived, they would need to take North. Hampton. Ideally, that would include defeating the Morris group and presenting Scott with the head of their leader. Everyone in Quebec was aware of Scott's massive action. All the powerful families in South City began to hide, afraid of being dragged into the fight. There were 13,000 men, and the situation was extremely chaotic. The other cities in Quebec trembled in fear, anxious that war would spread to their territories. No one knew how it was going to turn out. Everyone prayed for the safety of Northampton as it would soon become hell on earth. This group of madmen would unleash maximum bloodshed. 
whoever that was related to the Morris group would not escape their clutches. By now, Northampton had heard the news. Nuve, Trey and the others were terrified. Compared to what Scott had, they were defenseless. Scott is being ruthless. Is he really going all out? When Jesse heard the news, he quickly checked with Percy to see if they needed to take any countermeasures. Yet, Percy's answer was simple. As long as that person was around, they should just do whatever was required. Only then was Jesse's mind put at ease. Or else they wouldn't even be able to have the meeting. If the matter escalated, there was no way he could hide. As Scott led his troops through the narrow roads, the three thousand men in the funeral garb scared everyone they passed by. No one spoke the whole journey there. Even when they traversed through the hills, the troop maintained its formation. After all, they were Scott's elite soldiers. Sir, we are an hour away from Northampton, Theo reported. All right, press on. Scott coldly commanded. After marching some time, Typhoon noticed something immediately. Stopping in his tracks, he scouted ahead. There was an SUV parked not far from where they were. A man was sitting inside. Scott, I have been waiting for you a long time, the man declared with a smile. It was Levi. The Protector Chapter 472 Beside him stood three men Kieran, Azure Dragon, and White Tiger. White Tiger looked at the three thousand men in front of him in anticipation. Seeing them, Scott waved for his troop to stop. Have you been waiting for me? Scott asked. That's right, Levi replied, puffing his cigarette. Are you the leader of the Morris group? Of course. Scott was shocked to see how young Levi was. This is unexpected. I thought you would be a lot older, Scott lamented. When Levi caught a glimpse of the coffin they were carrying, he laughed. It appears you are well aware of the current situation. You even brought your own coffin to prepare for your death. Humph, I prepared it for you. Scott snorted. Levi chuckled. I'm sorry, I'm still young. Unlike you, it's going to be a long time. Before I became dust. You. Scott was no match for Levi when it came to taunting opponents. The next moment, he changed the subject. As his eyes sparkled, he exclaimed. Who is the one who killed my brothers and godson? Step out now. White Tiger acknowledged with a smile, it's me, but you don't deserve to know. My name. White Tiger was right. Despite how high Scott's position was, White Tiger only cared about actual fighting strength. Therefore, Scott had no right to know who he was. Very well, do the four of you plan to stand against three thousands of us? Scott. Sneered. White Tiger chuckled in reply, I'm sorry, it will only be me alone. How dare you? Boom. Suddenly, Garfield and his ten best men charged forward in unison. Whoosh. 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 Eleven swords glistened in the sun as they were thrust at White Tiger's vital organs. Meanwhile, White Tiger calmly tore off a piece of clothing and covered his mouth. He wanted to protect his mouth from the blood that was going to be splattered. Enough of your tricks. With a quick dash, Garfield thrust his sword towards White Tiger's throat. Clang. However, White Tiger's reflexes were as fast as lightning. He grabbed Garfield's wrist and turned the sword in Garfield's direction. Ugh. In a blink of an eye, the sword pierced through Garfield's body. He collapsed to the ground with disbelief written all over his face. The next moment, the ten elite warriors attacked simultaneously. But White Tiger managed to use his clothes to bind all ten blades together. Jumping into the air, he kicked four to five of them away while finishing the rest. With a single punch each. Blood splattered everywhere. In less than ten seconds, all ten men had fallen. It was a spectacular sight. Scott was impressed by what he saw. This man is really strong. 
Everyone knew the reason Garfield was the top dog at Edge City was due to his unrivaled strength. Even his ten subordinates were equally invincible. However, no one expected them to be disposed of in mere seconds. Scott and Theo now understood why Bones and Golem died. They were no match for their enemy. No matter how strong you are, can you withstand the force of the three thousand men behind me? Scott scowled. Typhoon stopped him and declared, let me have a go at him first. They were shocked to see Typhoon's expression. He looked like a beast that had not seen any victims in a long time. Both his eyes gleamed in a terrifying manner as if he were eyeing his prey. Boom! Just then, Typhoon emitted a frightening burst of energy that blasted the dust and leaves around him away. At that moment, Everyone noticed the stench of blood that permeated the air. They knew the butcher within Typhoon was back, who enjoyed killing for pleasure and sport. Despite retiring for thirty years, his strength continued to grow. Licking his lips, Typhoon glared at White Tiger as if he was his prey. The Protector Chapter 473 He began to approach White Tiger slowly. Despite his slow steps, Every stride covered tens of meters in distance. He managed to close the distance of over a hundred meters in a blink of an eye. My brothers in arms. Listen to me. Tear the other three men limb by limb. Scott. Commanded. Oh, 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 oh. At that moment, the howl of wolves broke the silence of the forest. Everyone looked around in shock as they saw wolves emerge from both sides of the forest. Their bodies were much bigger than that of ordinary wolves. There were nine on the left and another nine on the right. What made the sight more terrifying was that each wolf had a man riding on top. They were dressed in black with a mask covering their faces. All that could be seen were their bloodthirsty eyes. These eighteen men had crossbows and guns slung behind their backs. In there hands, were grenades, military blades, daggers, and other types of advanced weaponry. They formed the cavalry regiment of the God of War and were the nightmare of enemies on the battlefield. Every single one of them could defeat a thousand men. At the sight of all eighteen men, the morale of the three thousand men was sapped. Confusion started to reign among them as they looked towards their sides. Since when do men ride on wolves? We have never heard of it before. What are you panicking for? Attack. Scott bellowed. Remember, kill everyone who stands in your way. Scott's encouragement managed to set alight the flames of his men's fighting. Spirit. With three thousand men, there's no need for them to be afraid. Could this eighteen men really stop them? Oh, 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 oh. At that moment, all the wolves let out a long howl before commencing their attack. Boom. 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 As all eighteen wolves charged down the hills, the ground rumbled with a thunderous roar. Smashing into the three thousand troops, the wolves easily mowed down many of them, throwing the troops into disarray. Arg! Cries of agony were heard throughout. Meanwhile, the other nine groups of Scots men were fast approaching north. Hampton! Screech! Suddenly, the lead car jammed its brakes and caused the whole convoy to stop. There was a group of men standing right in front, they were all dressed in the same uniform. They wore military green tank tops, similarly colored pants, and black battle boots. However, they were all unarmed and were obviously the Dragon Legion under Alfie's command. They, too, were split into nine battalions to stop the enemy. Alfie's orders to them were simple it was to complete the mission with their bare hands. It caused the beast-like group to cheer fervently as they had not battled in months. Despite seeing Alfie's troops, Scott's men were not deterred. How dare they block our way unarmed? Brother in arms, let's kill them all. As Scott's men drew their swords, they marched towards Alfie and his troops. From their perspective, it didn't matter how well Alfie's men could fight. Bare fists. 
could never beat cold steel. Today, they were about to be chopped into minced meat. It would be the same for all the other eight groups. As all of Alfie's men attacked, both sides quickly clashed. Soon, cries of anguish filled the air. Meanwhile, Typhoon had reached within five meters of White Tiger. Boom! Suddenly, Typhoon picked up speed and charged forward, generating a blast of air behind him. The leaves on the ground were blown back while two deep-set footprints could be seen where he just stood. Swoosh! Coming out of nowhere, a black and gold dagger emerged in his hands. Boom! The moment the dagger appeared, it set off a strong gale. The wind would sting. Anyone it came into contact with, as it could cut like a blade. Typhoon's form was perfect in terms of its angle, power and speed when he thrust his dagger forward. He resolutely wanted his strike to draw blood. The Protector Chapter 474 Meanwhile, White Tiger's blood boiled with excitement when he saw how fearsome his enemy's attack was. He didn't expect the underworld to have someone so powerful left. The attack came in a flash. White Tiger bent backward so much that he almost touched the ground. With that, he was able to avoid the strike. Swoosh! Crack! Typhoon's knife missed and pierced the tree trunk behind him that was as thick as a man's waist. Suddenly, the tree cracked from the top to the bottom before exploding into smithereens, sending pieces of tree bark flying everywhere. It was an extremely terrifying sight. No wonder he was known as the greatest warrior in Quebec. However, White Tiger only responded with a smile. That's pretty impressive. Now it's my turn. With that, he lunged forward with a single punch. At the same moment, Typhoon countered with his dagger. Crack! Somehow, White Tiger caught the dagger between his fingers and smashed his fist into Typhoon's body. Boom! Upon impact, Typhoon was sent flying backward and crashed into a large tree. Before he could pick himself up, White Tiger was upon him. Bang! He smashed another punch into Typhoon's face. Oof! Blood started to ooze out of Typhoon's mouth. He tried to counter but was held down by White Tiger, who gave him no room to maneuver. Bang! With Typhoon pinned, White Tiger pounded his fists repeatedly, just like a pile driver. After more than 20 consecutive punches, Typhoon was covered in blood and no longer breathing. It was a gruesome sight. Scott and Theo's eyes widened so wide as if they could pop out any time. Was the gap in strength so big that Typhoon had no chance to defend himself? Typhoon was the best warrior in Quebec. What sort of madness is this? It simply didn't make any sense. They were now aware of why the Morris group acted with such impudence. With so many formidable characters among them, they definitely deserved to behave that way. If only Scott had as many powerful subordinates as possible under his command. All the surrounding territories would be his. He wouldn't just be ruling over Quebec. When they turned to check on the battle behind them, Scott and Theo gaped. They had expected an easy victory given the overwhelming odds of 3,000 men against 18. However, they were not prepared for what they saw. The ground was strewn with their men. The 3,000 men were slaughtered into disarray by the 18 wolf riders, who were unstoppable. All their men were fleeing, as no one had any courage left to fight. The cavalry regiment's attack was so devastating that it felt like the gods were punishing men. No ordinary man was able to withstand God's judgment. The cavalry regiment was the equivalent of nuclear weapons on the battlefield. Against such a weak enemy, they seemed to be in excessive use of power. Three thousand men were simply too few to provide a challenge. Thirty thousand men would have stood a better chance. Back to the other nine groups. When Scott's subordinates clashed with Alfie's men, they realized they had misjudged the enemy. 
These people are mad. They're too strong for us. In their twenty years of fighting, they had never met such a formidable foe. In a blink of an eye, the formations of the other nine groups were broken up. All of Scott's subordinates collapsed on the ground while grimacing in pain. All it took was two minutes to finish them off. Thirteen thousand men were rooted in a very short duration. No one had expected such an outcome. In their eyes, Scott was invincible. However, in the face of true strength, they couldn't even last more than three minutes. At that moment, Scott was dumbfounded when he realized Typhoon was dead. And all three thousand of his elite troops had been rooted. What else did he have left? Nothing at all. Sir, the other nine groups have reported that they have been defeated. We're finished. Everything is lost. Even Theo was almost in tears. The Protector Chapter 475 Scott closed his eyes in despair. It's all gone. They had not expected such a swift ending. The coffin they carried was indeed meant for him. Your biggest mistake was to attack Northampton, or else you would still be able to live. Scott was jolted when he heard Levi's voice. Opening his eyes, he asked Levi, before I die, can you tell me your identity? Suddenly, Theo interrupted with a trembling voice, Sir. I know who they are. What? Scott asked. It's Northampton. Who can't we afford to offend in Northampton? Theo. Reminded. When Scott saw the wolf riders, he exclaimed, Are those the infamous cavalry? Regiment? Does that mean he's, the god of war? Scott caught his breath as he mentioned the name of the supreme warrior. He had not expected it at all. It was no wonder that the head of the Morris group was a mystery, and no information could be found about him. The only rumor they heard was that no one knew where he was from. It didn't matter, since he was the legend himself. Instantly, Scott was filled with regret. He despised the fact that Sebastian had provoked him to lead his army out. Finally, the incident that had caused so much panic dissipated just like that, and no one was the wiser. There were many rumors that perceived the incident as a fabrication. Scott had never gathered 10,000 men in the first place. No such thing ever happened. Nevertheless, one rumor was absolutely true. Scott had disappeared. Overnight, Quebec's underworld was wiped out. Something that couldn't be done over more than ten years was accomplished. Within one night, the masses were cheering in joy. After all, Scott and his men were like parasites, and they had continuously terrorized the populace. When Levi had men investigate Scott's assets, it came up to over a hundred billion. He ordered all the money to be used for charity. Whoever dared to abuse it, he would personally hold them accountable. With that, the populace cheered the decision. Such a popular decision would certainly increase the cohesion within the city's residents. Now, the Morris Group's objective was to continue developing Northampton and spend the funds for the benefit of the populace. Meanwhile, Jesse asked Levi if he was interested to go to South City and develop Quebec. However, Levi rejected him for the time being as he still wanted to stay by Zoe's side. He had told his wife that he wished to give her the future she wanted. Therefore, he would only move to South City if that were what Zoe longed for. After the battle, South City and all the other city's family-run industries operated. In peace. Everyone was aware that Northampton was untouchable, and therefore no one dared to attack it. If they did go there, it would be to develop Northampton first while profits were secondary. Hence, the development of Northampton accelerated very quickly. One day, Azure Dragon went to see Levi. Do you still remember Scott's hundred billion worth in assets? Azure Dragon asked. I do. What about it? Did someone abuse the funds? Levi frowned as he asked. 
Azure Dragon shook his head, it's actually worse. Someone discreetly acquired the company's assets. The 80 billion that was meant to be invested in public. Charities are all gone. What? How did that happen? Did someone secretly siphon the money out? Levi! exclaimed in shock. How could the funds I had specifically earmarked encounter such a problem? Have you investigated it thoroughly? Levi inquired. More or less. The one responsible is the largest company in Quebec, the Triple Group from Kyria. They acquired the company and accessed the 80 billion. Azure Dragon explained. The Protector Chapter 476. How dare they do something like that right under my nose? Are they looking for trouble? Levi fumed. Levi realized that these foreigners were accorded many special benefits in Arudaya. Meanwhile, his own countrymen didn't get any special privileges. It's not going to be easy. The triple group contributes a significant portion of Quebec's GDP and creates a lot of job opportunities. Therefore, they are allowed to act with impunity as the local government turns a blind eye to their actions. In fact, the government is going to introduce many policies that favor their business. Azure Dragon explained. What does South City have to say about it? Levi inquired. South City is not keen on pursuing the matter and has agreed with their actions. They said that the Triple Group has promised to increase their contributions towards public welfare and charity. Azure Dragon sighed. Bang! Suddenly, Levi slammed the table forcefully. This is unacceptable. How can the Great Arudaya be manipulated by a foreign company? Why do we allow them to dictate what we do? Levi thundered. Azure Dragon was caught by surprise at how angry Levi was. Tell South City to deal with this immediately. Levi barked. All right, I understand. Levi was aware that Scott's assets were very valuable, and many parties had their eye on it ever since Scott's demise. The Suarez family and the Lopez family knew the truth about what happened, so they stayed away. However, the triple group didn't and did whatever they wanted due to their powerful position as a foreign company. They used about a billion to acquire an asset worth a hundred billion. That came up to a profit of eighty billion. Perhaps South City could tolerate the issue, but it was unacceptable to Levi. The funds were supposed to be used for good, hence, whoever dared touch it would feel his wrath. With that, Azure Dragon was sent to South City to deal with the problem. Meanwhile, Levi arrived at Oriental Star Group to meet with Zoe and was told that Zoe was in the midst of discussing a collaboration. Outside the meeting room, Gary related to Levi in delight, Mr. Garrison, the stars, which we have groomed Helena and Maurice, are now wildly popular. The triple group invites us to form a collaboration today. They want Helena to be their product spokesperson, and I heard her fee would go up to a billion. Also, this is only the beginning. There are plans for a series of projects later on. The more Gary shared, the more excited he became. When Levi heard that the triple group was involved, he frowned. Did you mean the triple group from South City? He asked. That's right. After a short while, the negotiations for the partnership were complete. The groundwork for the collaboration had been laid. What came next was the discussion on price and the signing of the contract. Zoe was all smiles. Ever since their two blockbuster movies, the number of companies who wanted Helena to be their spokesperson or attend their commercial events increased significantly. Even the contract with the triple group was worth more than a hundred million. The Oriental Group had opened the door for them to make it big in the entertainment industry. Helena and the other stars' value jumped many-fold. Ms. Lopez, if there aren't any unforeseen issues, we will sign the contract. Tomorrow. I have run this through our big boss, and he has agreed to all your 
conditions. Horace confirmed with a smile. Horace from Triple Group was responsible for the negotiations. All right, no problem. Zoe nodded in agreement. When she returned to her office, Levi asked, are they signing a spokeswoman to showcase their electronic products? Everyone knew that the Triple Group's electronic products were top-notch. Zoe shook her head. No, the electronic products will come later. They are. Signing Helena now for a charity event. What? A charity event? Levi furrowed his eyebrows and could feel something. Wasn't right. The Protector Chapter 477. That's right. The Triple Group plans to organize a charity event in South City. They have invited many celebrities and prominent figures to the event. In fact, if Helena participates in it, she will receive a handsome appearance fee. The Triple Group is being very generous this time. I hear that they will be donating 10 billion to charity, and it's an impressive amount of money. It's rare to find companies that do good now. Zoe couldn't help but sigh. It's all a sham. How shameless can they be? Levi fumed as soon as he understood what was going on. Zoe was shocked at his reaction. The triple group was devious. They took away 800 billion initially. Earmarked for charity and only used about 10 billion from it to placate South City. By organizing a charity event. What was even more infuriating was the fact that they organized it under the triple group's name and invited A-list celebrities to further bolster their reputation. They were just promoting the triple group's brand under the pretext of charity. The benefits they stood to gain were worth more than 10 billion. It was simply despicable. Honey, don't sign the contract tomorrow. Levi demanded. Zoe was puzzled. Hey? Why? Honey, do you know why Triple Group wants to donate to charity? Levi asked. To elevate their image in society as a caring organization. Zoe replied. No. The Triple Group needs to fulfill the requirement that South City has set for them. Before this, they had gained access to a hundred billion worth of charity funds, Levi related the whole incident to Zoe. Why don't you get it back instead? Zoe questioned. Levi smiled wryly. Firstly, the triple group acted swiftly. Even though the funds were earmarked for public welfare, they managed to acquire the company. Discreetly. Secondly, South City turns a blind eye to their actions as long as they continue expanding there. They're really despicable. These bloodsuckers pretend to be a company that cares despite having stolen the hard-earned money from the poor. It's just a charade, damn them. In that case, I won't sign the contract. I don't want their dirty money. Zoe raged. Although she usually tolerated common business practices, this was something too big for her to ignore. Therefore, she was firm in her decision. M.M., that's my wife for you. Levi complimented Zoe with a thumbs up. On his way out of the company, Levi bumped into Helena and the others. They were polite with Levi as they acknowledged him as their benefactor. Without him, they would still be making two to three thousand a month and living. In a dark basement. They would definitely not have the opportunity to live a life that allowed them to. Sign a contract worth tens of millions. However, Morris's attitude seemed to have changed. He reminded Levi, Mr. Garrison, now that the four of us are famous, I hope that you won't share with others the fact that we used to work in sales. To us, that was a shameful part of our lives. Meanwhile, Helena tried to push him away, but Maurice was adamant. He added, We will definitely give you an incentive fee. Why don't you tell us how much you want, and I'll get someone to pay you? After that, we will pretend that we don't know one another. If you let our secret out, I will definitely make you pay. 
it was common knowledge in the company that Maurice was full of himself ever. Since he became successful, he did not respect anyone else anymore. Incentive fee? Fine, give me ten billion then. Levi replied. The Protector Chapter 478 Everyone was stunned to hear Levi's demands. Maurice looked at Levi in disbelief. You're really greedy. I'm warning you not to. Go overboard. Levi ignored him and left. Why is he like that? Maurice fumed. Helena admonished him, Maurice, how can you speak to him so rudely? Mr. Garrison is our benefactor. Humph, I admit we do owe him. But the reason I'm popular now is because of my own efforts and acting skills. He probably contributed about 10% of our success. That's why I wanted to give him some money to repay his kindness. Instead, he wanted to take advantage of me. Maurice sneered. Helena glared at him before she left, fuming. In life, there were many people who became famous or rich overnight. It was hard to stay grounded as most people couldn't help but let success get to their heads. After Maurice became famous overnight, his attitude changed significantly. He didn't care for his old friends and broke up with his girlfriend of seven years. In the office, he would always put on airs. Other than Zoe, he would not treat anyone else with respect. To the extent that he accepted private jobs for additional income. Rumor had it that his personal life was also in a mess. Zoe was now aware of his behavior. Are you not going to do something about him? Levi asked. Given that the two movies are doing very well. We can only turn a blind eye for. Now, Zoe replied with a helpless expression. Suddenly, her tone changed. However, he has gone overboard. He and Helena. Were supposed to be paid a few hundred thousand for acting in the films. But. When he saw how popular the movie became, he demanded a bonus of at least 10 million. Or a salary of at least 20 million for his next film. To be honest, he really is very popular and well worth the money. By the way. What about Helena? Levi asked. Zoe responded with a smile. Helena and the rest are really grateful and have left all the decisions to the company. Their attitude hasn't changed much despite their success. That's very good. Levi laughed. The next day, Triple Group's representative, Horace, came to continue the negotiations. Maurice and Helena were also present. Being the spokesperson, Maurice was feeling excited. Once the contract was signed, he would receive over 10 million as spokesperson fees. He had planned to buy a mansion and luxury car with the money. Everyone waited in the meeting room until Zoe arrived. Ms. Lopez, if you don't have any issues, please sign the contract, Horace. Suggested with a smile. Smiling back at him knowingly, Zoe replied, I'm sorry Mr. Waller, I won't be. Signing it today. What? Zoe's decision was as shocking as being struck by lightning. Everyone in the room was stunned as they looked at her in disbelief. Didn't everything go well yesterday? The triple group is being very generous with a hundred million worth of spokesperson fees. Why did she change her mind? Before Gary and the others could respond, Maurice couldn't sit still anymore. Ms. Lopez, why? Where else can we find a collaboration like that? Of all the recent offers we received from other companies, the triple group has given us the best terms. Maurice stared at Zoe in disbelief. Levi, who was sitting beside, sneered, the management has decided not to sign. It. Are you doubting the management's decision? You. I. Maurice was dumbfounded at Levi's challenge. No matter how arrogant he got, he realized that he was still dependent on Zoe. Why don't you keep quiet as Ms. Lopez has her reasons? Helena and her colleagues held Maurice back. 
The Protector Chapter 479 Maurice was now becoming increasingly arrogant. During the management meeting, he insisted on interrupting. He was upset but forced himself to suppress his anger. Meanwhile, Gary questioned, Ms. Lopez, what happened? We didn't hold a meeting to discuss this, so why are we rejecting the contract now? All the other members of management were puzzled. Horace too inquired with a smile, Ms. Lopez, may I know what the problem is? Weren't we clearly on the same page yesterday? Why are you going back on your word today? Just then, Maurice couldn't help but interrupt, that's right. Ms. Lopez, your decision shows that you are untrustworthy. You can't let your personal agenda affect how you run the company. As actors, credibility is important to us too. Even if you are the boss, you can't diss us like that. Know your place. Zoe bellowed suddenly, shocking everyone present. The company management is having a meeting. Since when do you have the right to speak? You are becoming increasingly presumptuous. Zoe snarled as she couldn't tolerate Morris's behavior anymore. Meanwhile, Levi was secretly gloating. Despite his wife's gentle demeanor, she would snap back when cornered. I'm sorry, Ms. Lopez. Maurice apologized and hung his head in silence. He was utterly embarrassed after being admonished by Zoe in front of everyone. As it was the most humiliating moment of his life, all he felt was anger. Clenching both his fists tightly, he promised himself, Zoe and Levi, just you. Wait. I'll have my revenge. Zoe explained to Horace, Mr. Waller, I did some research last night and realized that your company is not being honest. The charity gala you are organizing is a sham. Hearing that, Horace's expression darkened. Does Zoe know the truth? Therefore, I won't participate in an event that goes against my conscience. I also won't allow my employees to do the same too. Hence, I won't sign the contract. Because I'm worried such a despicable matter would negatively impact Oriental's reputation. Zoe scoffed. Horace sniggered, very well, it's just a bunch of celebrities. It's a joke that you think I can't find them elsewhere. Next time, don't expect to ever work with the triple group again. Fuming, Horace prepared to leave. I would like to give your company some advice. If you keep taking advantage of other people, karma will come for you. Especially when it involves a hundred billion. Do you know how many people that hard-earned money belongs to? Zoe warned. You. Further infuriated, Horace slammed the door as he left. Meanwhile, there was silence in the meeting room. Everyone looked at Zoe with a puzzled expression. All right, all those who are the management, please stay back. The rest, you are dismissed. Zoe instructed. She wanted to explain to the rest of the management the reason she didn't sign the contract. Since it involved the secrets of the triple group, she didn't want too many people to know as it might put their lives in danger. Maurice then left with dissatisfaction written all over his face. Once outside, Helena asked in a low voice, What do you think the reason was for Ms. Lopez to reject the contract? I'm sure she has her reasons. I think it's a good idea we didn't sign it, someone remarked. Haha, I know the reason why Zoe doesn't want to sign the contract. Maurice exclaimed. What is it then? Everyone looked at him curiously. It's because I offended her husband. She wants to make things difficult for me. On purpose. Didn't you see how she singled me out during the meeting? My guess is that she doesn't want me to sign any spokesperson contracts or take any advertisements. She plans to blacklist me instead. Maurice declared. Viciously. Maurice, 
your imagination is running wild. Ms. Lopez isn't someone like that. Helena defended. Humph. I'm sure about it. She's definitely biased against me. The Protector Chapter 480 In the meeting room, the management board agreed with Zoe's decision after. She explained herself. These bloodsuckers are despicable for using the public's money to do charity. Work. That's right. If the Oriental Star Group is involved with them, it would be devastating for our reputation when the truth is discovered. Gary and the other members of management were outraged. I'm worried that the Triple Group would seek revenge against us. In terms of both financial capability and influence, aren't we weaker compared to them? Someone asked. Definitely. The Triple Group's financial prowess is the strongest among all, and no one can stand in their way. Zoe laughed in response. Let them take their revenge. Don't forget we still have the Morris Group supporting us. Meanwhile, Horace didn't leave Northampton. Instead, he went to look for a different entertainment company, given that Northampton had the most developed entertainment industry within the region. There were many good drama schools there that naturally led to better entertainment companies. At night, Horace was inside a five-star hotel. Standing in front of him was Maurice, Helena, and other new stars from Oriental. Star Group Stable Horace didn't want to give up on them as their new film had been a blockbuster. Recently. Hence, they were too popular to be ignored. Smoking a cigar, Horace grinned. I'm sure all of you know why I have asked you. To come. Helena and the others felt uneasy. However, Maurice was direct. Do you plan to sign us as spokespersons? That's right, you're a smart one. Horace laughed. Helena interjected, but we can't do this, Mr. Waller. You have to go through our company first. Furthermore, Ms. Lopez has rejected you earlier in the day. Taking a puff from his cigar, Horace beamed. I've seen the contract you signed. With Oriental. The restrictions they placed on you are rather lax. Everyone including Helena was aware of that. Zoe valued freedom so she didn't impose upon them the draconian terms that would limit their options. Their contracts allowed them to take on freelance work. Other entertainment companies would impose rigid contracts upon their artists to tie them down to the company. The terms would be so draconian that the company would even determine what food they ate. Horace continued, therefore, you don't have to worry about accepting freelance work. The company has no legal basis to take action against you. With a wave of his hand, Horace's assistant brought out a set of contracts. You will get 15 million each. After that, our company will sign you on as spokespersons for our electronic products. We will offer you a salary of at least 80 million annually. Horace declared. At that moment, Morris's eyes sparkled as he replied. Fantastic. I'll sign it. They. Money isn't important as long as I can have the opportunity to work with a company as big as the Triple Group. Wonderful. You do know what's good for you, I'm impressed. Horace remarked. Maurice signed the contract in front of Helena and the others. Ding. In less than 10 minutes, 15 million arrived in his account. Maurice was. Ecstatic. After slogging through two movies for Oriental, all he received was 500,000. Now, he received 15 million just for participating in a charity event. A mansion? Luxury car? Beautiful women? He was able to buy anything he wanted now. Everyone else looked on in envy as no one could deny the temptation of 15 million. Helena, what are you still waiting for? Sign it. It's 15 million. You don't have to feel bad for the company as their contract doesn't restrict us from carrying out 
Freelance work. Maurice persuaded the others. So what if they find out? We should do whatever we want. The Protector Chapter 481 Helena throat moved as she gulped. She came from a poor village and naturally wanted the money too. Fifteen million. Was undeniably a lot. At that moment, she was stuck between the temptation of money and maintaining her principles. Mr. Waller, thank you for the kind offer, but I have to decline, Helena rejected. The contract? I won't sign it too. Helena's other two companions followed suit. We'll sign it. Another three supporting actors couldn't resist the temptation and agreed to accept the contract. Before Helena and the other two left, Horace openly threatened, Miss Helena. Despite how popular you are now, you have just limited your own options by rejecting the triple group's offer. Ha <laughs> ha. After Helena and the others left, Horace patted Maurice on his shoulders and smiled. I think Zoe has something against you and wants to destroy your career. Then, Maurice told Horace about the incident with Levi. Haha, ha, so you did offend her husband. What a joke. Besides, her husband isn't much of a benefactor anyway. All he did was to use you as cheap labor by only offering you 500,000. Do you know how much both movies made? So far? Six billion. Horace burst into laughter. Bang. 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 Maurice slammed his fist on the wall repeatedly and hissed, Damn you, Zoe. I made six billion for you, and all I got was five hundred thousand. So, why don't you join me? I will guarantee that we will make you a superstar. I'm sure you are aware how powerful the triple group is. Horace offered. Maurice smiled in response. Mr. Waller, my sentiments exactly. I can no longer stay with Oriental. All right, but you have to stay with them for now. When the time comes, I'll sign you over. By the way, I heard that their directors and screenwriters are very capable too. I have a job for you. Get them to join us, and I'll pay you a million for every single person you convince. Horace smiled diabolically. He planned to recruit the core members of the Oriental Star Group. When he heard that he would be compensated for his efforts, Maurice readily agreed. In fact, he volunteered, if you are interested in Zoe, I would try my best to get her in bed with you. At the thought of Zoe, Horace licked his lips. That would be wonderful. Maurice, too, fantasized about Zoe. He smiled slyly. By then, don't forget to share her with me. She's someone that's just irresistible. It's just that I don't dare express myself to her in the company. If she weren't the boss, I would already have taken her. Meanwhile, Horace stood up with a grin. Maurice, I have prepared a surprise for you. Enjoy. After Horace left the room, Morris's eyes gleamed when two pretty girls entered. They're more gorgeous than my girlfriend. I'm not going to let that ugly country bumpkin tie me down my whole life. With that thought in mind, Maurice pulled both women into his embrace and stepped into the tub with them. Little did he know that the room was filled with pinhole cameras, and all his actions were captured from every imaginable angle. The cameras did not miss a single detail. The next day, Maurice came into the office looking exhausted. Maurice, come quickly. The Union Square has an event that requires your presence. A member of the staff informed him. How much are they paying? Maurice asked. The appearance fee is 500,000. It's the highest we have received. Recently. The staff replied. 500,000? That's peanuts. I'm not going. The Protector Chapter 482. Everyone present was shocked at Morris's remarks. 
In their eyes, Maurice was someone so ambitious to the point that he would accept work for fifty to a hundred thousand. So why did he turn down a job worth five hundred thousand? Maurice, the appearance fee is five hundred thousand. Did you mishear it as fifty thousand? The staff clarified with him. I didn't get it wrong. Is five hundred thousand a lot? Do they think I'm that desperate? Raising his voice, Maurice caused the staff to tremble in fear. Are you aware that the two movies I acted in grossed seven billion? That means I'm worth at least tens of millions. So, are they looking down on me by just offering five hundred thousand? With fifteen million in hand, five hundred thousand was peanuts to Maurice now. Maurice, are you crazy? The staff couldn't help but retort. Of course, the movies made the company a lot of money. But don't forget that. You are just a newcomer. The company not only provided you the opportunity but also gave you 500,000. Furthermore, they spent a lot of resources on promoting you. Isn't that fair enough? Besides, you were the one that signed the contract willingly. The other members of staff added. Maurice scoffed, the fact is I made them seven billion, but they only gave me five hundred thousand. Why don't we make it public and let our peers decide whether they are taking advantage of newcomers? Maurice, what are you doing? Come with me now. Helena pulled Maurice aside to somewhere private. Maurice, as your longtime classmate, I would advise you to stop going down this route. In life, we should have a conscience when making choices, or else we would end up with a bad reputation. Helena cautioned him. Meanwhile, Maurice brought out a set of car keys and swung it around his fingers. It was obvious those keys were for a Ferrari. I don't think it's such big a deal. I'm driving a luxury car and staying in a mansion. Now. Isn't it wonderful? Why do I have to stay back here and suffer? Helena, my. Advice to you is to sign the contract with Mr. Waller. I remember that your parents. Are seriously ill and need surgery immediately. Also, your siblings still have to. Attend school and you were worried you couldn't afford their school fees. Don't. You want them to live a comfortable life? All you need to do is to say yes. Your parents could live a life free of pain, and they would be happy. Isn't that what you want? Helena was dumbfounded at Morris's words. Helena, listen to me. Sign the contract with the triple group. With the one-off. By out worth tens of millions, your family's fortunes will be changed forever. Maurice continued to tempt her. After struggling within herself, Helena was adamant. No. I'll still stick with M.S. Lopez. I don't mind making less money as long as I can sleep at night. Seeing Helena leave, Maurice berated her, You're a fool. Stupid girl. The next few days, Maurice acted with impunity within the company. He would scold the staff and other newcomers without reason. However, due to the popularity of the movie, everyone had no choice but to endure. Meanwhile, Zoe had begun to notice that Maurice was wearing clothes that cost hundreds of thousands and wearing watches that cost more than a million. On top of that, he drove a luxury car. It was obvious something wasn't right. Not only that, but a few of the other up-and-coming stars were also visibly less motivated in their work. They rejected most of the projects offered and simply lounged around the office while putting on airs. As they largely didn't break any rules, Zoe had no basis to intervene. Finally, the triple group managed to organize their charity gala in South City, and it was a resounding success. Both the media and public came away praising how the triple group was a socially responsible organization. After that, the triple group planned to organize a charity gala in Northampton. 
The Protector Chapter 483 As the Triple Group continued to expand, South City was no longer enough to satisfy it. They wanted to penetrate the city with the largest economy in the region, which was Northampton. Soon, the list of guests for the charity gala was announced. Ms. Lopez, take a look at the guest list quickly. Gary and his staff brought over the list hastily. Morris, Wilford, Tricia, Zoe read out their names solemnly. There were ten in total, and they were all new stars who the Oriental Star Group was promoting. They had surreptitiously signed a spokesperson's contract with the Triple Group. Without the company's knowledge, Zoe was infuriated. Didn't I say that we would decline to work with the Triple Group? Why did some of them still sign a contract still? Go and get all of them. Here. Meanwhile, Gary replied, Ms. Lopez, please calm down. Our contracts with them do not contain any clauses that bar them from freelance work. Hence, what they're doing is not illegal and neither does it breach the contract terms. If there's any conflict with them, it would not benefit us at all. Given how well received the two movies are currently, it would damage both our reputation and financials if we offended the lead actors. Are you suggesting that we just bear with it? Zoe fumed. For now, that's our only choice. We have to pretend that we don't know anything about it, Gary concluded reluctantly. He did not expect to have been promoting such an ingrate. Maurice was even more difficult to deal with than the all. Ms. Lopez, Maurice wants to see you. At that moment, Maurice arrived and threw a set of accounts onto the table. Zoe, the movie has grossed 10 billion now. Zoe picked up the accounts and took a look. Aren't these the respective accounts for the two movies? The accounts were supposed to be confidential. Other than the company and large broadcasting websites, no one had access to them. Where did you get the accounts from? Zoe demanded. Meanwhile, Maurice sat down and sneered, it doesn't matter where I got it from. I just want to know how much are you going to pay me now that you made ten billion. Maurice, stop being rude. You're speaking to Ms. Lopez. Gary reprimanded him. Maurice scoffed, so what if she is? She's still human. What's wrong with my question? Zoe smiled in response. 500,000. Your pay for both movies is simply 500,000. It has been decided in the very beginning that all the actors' salaries combined would not exceed 10 million. The company still needs to spend on special effects and pay the scriptwriters. Everyone knows that. Maurice nodded. I understand that. But it's obvious that the movies have made a profit of 10 billion. Are you serious in just paying me 500,000? Zoe's lips widened into a broad smile. That's right. It's because the contract states that your fee is 500,000. Whether the film is a success or a failure, it has nothing to do with you. Ha ha ha. Didn't you always emphasize that Oriental is a people-centric company? In the end, you still choose profits over ethics. How could you only pay the male lead 500,000 when the movie has made 10 billion? Isn't that simply unfair? Maurice challenged. Zoe remained expressionless. I speak based on my principles and will follow the contract to the letter. No more. No less. Fine, shall I expose this issue and let the public decide who is in the right? Maurice was smart to use the film's popularity to blackmail the company. No, don't. Maurice, please calm down. Everything is open for discussion, Gary. Interjected. If the matter got out, it would be very damaging to both the company's reputation and financial position, regardless of who was in the wrong. Maurice, name your price. Gary demanded. T. 
H. R. E. E. Bilio. N. The Protector Chapter 484. Gasp. When Maurice stated his price, everyone present caught their breath. Three billion, is he crazy? Maurice laughed. What is it? Do you think I'm being greedy? Both the movies are expected to earn 18 billion in the end. Even after you paid me 3 billion, you still have 15 billion in profits left. More importantly, if word gets out, the reputational damage would be devastating. Taking that into account, 3 billion isn't too much to ask for. Maurice explained confidently. Gary and the others exchanged glances as they weighed their options. If Maurice blew the matter up, the controversy would easily cost the company more than $3 billion. More importantly, the loss in credibility would be beyond repair. Maurice, let's discuss it further. Could you lower your demands? In return, we will pay you more for your next film, Gary asked, trying his best to negotiate. No. It's $3 billion. Take it or leave it. Since Maurice had planned to sign a contract with the Triple Group, he didn't care about the next movie. Gary and the others were running out of ideas. All they could do now was look to Zoe for her decision. Ms. Lopez, what do you think? By now, Maurice no longer respected Zoe. Looking at him, Zoe scoffed, no way. We won't give you anything, so stop. Dreaming. Uh. Gary and the others were stunned as they expected Zoe to continue. Negotiations. Instead, she rejected Maurice outright. Maurice, too, was caught off guard as Zoe didn't even bother to negotiate. Very well. What an unethical boss. Maurice sneered as he left. Ms. Lopez, are you sure that's all right? The impact will be huge if it blows up. Gary was feeling doubtful. Zoe replied firmly. If we compromise, it will open the floodgates for others to do. The same. At night at Northampton's Grand Manor, the triple group held their charity gala. There. It was a massive event. Everyone who was somebody in Northampton was invited. Even Grover. Attended the event. Many of them were the rich and famous of Northampton who came from all industries. Actors and actresses were definitely included. Meanwhile, the media broadcasted Morris's arrival live as he was the most popular actor then. Everyone's attention was focused on him as the viewers who tuned in exceeded 10 million. The gala was hosted by Horace. The triple group has decided to make a one-off donation of 10 billion to North. Hampton's charity and public welfare organizations. It would be used to build retirement homes, orphanages, schools, etc. Horace announced at the end of the night. At the same time, he handed a check of 10 billion to the president of North Hampton Charity Association, Sanford Collins. All the media were focused on reporting and showcasing that particular moment. The Triple Group is a socially responsible company. Not only did they donate 10 billion to South City, but they also donated 10 billion to Northampton. That's right. Although they are a Kyrian company, they have contributed significantly to the development of Quebec. From now on, I will only buy Triple Group's electronic products. When the broadcast of the charity gala was over, the internet cheered. Perception towards the triple group improved significantly soon after that. In just over 10 minutes, the online sales of triple group products in Arudaya increased by a few billion. Most of its electronic products were sold out. Meanwhile, Levi was watching the broadcast and was infuriated. The trust fund that he had painstakingly set up had not only been usurped by the triple group but used to further their commercial interests. At that moment, Azure Dragon informed him that South City sent their apologies. They did not expect the triple group to have extended their claws over North. 
Hampton. Humph, don't blame me after coming here to taunt me. A frosty glint flashed. Across Levi's eye. The Protector Chapter 485. With her fist tightly clenched, Zoe, too, was trembling out of anger. This really is a capitalistic society. Power and influence can not only cover up the truth but also whitewash sins into virtues. Meanwhile, the charity gala was still being broadcasted. The triple group had lined up ten poor kids in front of the cameras. Horace declared, the triple group will take care of these ten kids up until they graduate from university. That's great. Many in the audience were clapping and cheering. Thunderous applause rumbled throughout as the atmosphere there was ecstatic. The triple group had won a decisive victory in both reputation and financial gains. They were now known as a socially responsible organization. Ladies and gentlemen, our next segment may not be aligned with tonight's theme. But I feel it's an opportunity to help someone redress an injustice. Horace changed the topic of the night. Oh? Does someone want to expose an injustice done? Everyone was curious to know what it was about. At that moment, Maurice, Wilford, Tricia, and the rest stood on the stage. Let me introduce to you the most popular male actor currently, Maurice. Followed by supporting actor and actress, Wilford, and Tricia respectively. Horace presented. Given how popular their movie was, Everyone recognized who they were. What's going on? Were Maurice and the rest treated unjustly? Everyone was puzzled. Horace then passed the microphone to Maurice. Looking at the crowd in the eyes, Maurice explained, Everyone knows that I'm the male lead in the two recent blockbuster movies. Up till now, the Oriental Star group had made more than 20 billion in profits. However, do you know how much I am paid for the films? Please take a guess. Fifty million. No, that's too much. Guess lower. Maurice yelled. Ten million. No. It can't be less than five million, can it? Even if they paid five billion, it would still be reasonable. Someone questioned. Fine, let me tell you the answer. I, alone, am paid with a meager sum of five hundred thousand. When Maurice exposed the answer, there was an immediate uproar. Everyone's face was filled with disbelief. What? They only paid the lead five hundred thousand after making twenty billion? Is that even possible? This is outright absurd. Oriental Star Group is practically abusing the rights of their employees. 500,000, are they kidding me? The Oriental Star Group is a malignant tumor that must be removed from the industry. How can they lowball their actors like that? Everyone present was angered by the injustice that they had just heard about. Meanwhile, Maurice was satisfied with the impact he made. This is not something I made up myself. I have proof as I even kept the receipt. Changing the subject, Maurice asked again, do you want to know how much my friend was paid? Taking over the mic, Trisha reported her salary, I was paid 300,000. Then it was Wilford's turn. I was also paid 300,000. I was paid even less, 200,000. I, too, received 200,000 only. I'm the lowest at 150,000. When the supporting cast exposed their salaries, the outcries from the audience were deafening. Many of them were cursing and swearing at Oriental. This is a joke. A movie that garnered 20 billion in profit only paid less than 3 million in salaries to their cast. The management of Oriental are bloodsuckers. How could they do such a thing? How can we have such an unethical company in Northampton? They should be blacklisted. Just like that, public opinion turned against Oriental. It wasn't only those in attendance that were angry, but even those online were berating Oriental. There were calls to boycott Oriental. 
In fact, some even urged revenge. How could they shamelessly twist the facts? At that moment, Zoe was so furious that she almost smashed the TV. The Protector Chapter 486 Zoe knew that Maurice would take revenge, but she didn't expect him to do it by defaming Oriental Star Group on the night of the charity gala. Horace took the microphone and spoke into it. I'd like to make an announcement. Maurice Lorraine and the ten directors here had been personally invited to attend this event. Their presence here tonight has nothing to do with Oriental Star Group. Hey? How is that so? Some were confused. That's right. It was a private invitation. Horace explained with a smile. I once proposed to Oriental to invite a few directors to the event, but the president turned me down. She doubted my kind initiative and thought we were planning to use the charity. Gala's reputation to earn blood money, so she refused to cooperate with us. Sigh. Triple Group sure has it rough. We get flamed when we don't take part in charity, but when we finally involved ourselves, our motives end up being questioned. This is just cruel. What? Oriental is that despicable? Why would they question someone else's kindness? How shameless can they be? Triple Group has really been doing charity work. They've already donated over two billion to South City and Northampton. Is that not charity? Oriental is a joke. A company like this deserves to fail. Let's join forces and bring them down. With Horace adding fuel to the flame, the crowd became enraged. They now utterly despised Oriental Star Group and wanted the company to fall into ruin. The situation was even worse online. Thousands of netizens began to boycott Oriental Star Group. Let's flood their movies with horrible ratings. Within an hour, two major films received tens of thousands of bad reviews. The films suffered greatly in regard to sales and reputation. Oriental Star Group was now in a mess. Horace continued, I'd like to attest to Maurice Lorraine and the rest of the directors here. Even though it isn't a huge amount, they had offered their contributions. They disregarded the company regulations and are risking their jobs just to be a part of this charity gala. Therefore, I'd like to request for a round of applause for these youngsters. Wonderful. I'll invest in any movie you make in the future. Yet. Maurice Lorraine should become Northampton's charity ambassador. Many big shots gave their responses. A thunderous applause ensued. The internet was filled with positive comments about Maurice and the rest of the directors. The ten directors were now regarded as powerful and fearless charity heroes. Upon seeing this, Maurice curled his lips into a smile. He didn't expect things to turn out so well. All the fame and fortune are now mine. Then, he thought of Helena Engler. You must have a few screws loose. Now that Oriental is finished, so are you. Maurice announced to the crowd, I refuse to work under such a despicable company. Is there anyone who's willing to take me in? Wilford Boyd and the others chimed in, same goes for us. We don't want to remain in Oriental anymore. We've had it with this trashy business. Come work for us. Many big hots were more than happy to hire Maurice and the others. Horace smiled. I'd be willing to give you guys a chance if you're interested. Please. Working for Triple Group is all we could ever ask for. Maurice and they. Rest responded, immediately accepting the offer. However, Maurice added, but I'm still under contract with Oriental. They might. Refuse to let me go. Don't worry about that, Mr. Lorraine. You have the support of everyone here. The audience exclaimed. In that case, I'd like to sign with Triple Group, said Maurice and the others. And just like that, all of them joined Triple Group. The Protector Chapter 487 Zoe shook with rage in front of the television. 
she was on the verge of tears. She didn't think that Horace and Maurice would pull such a trick. Oriental Star Group has become public enemy number one. Just the public's opinion is enough to put the pressure on Oriental, not to mention. If all the huge corporations decides to close in on us. Don't be mad anymore, honey, Levi assured her as he pulled her into his arms. Let him sit on that high horse of his for now. I'll make it clear to them that it's just as easy for them to hit rock bottom as it is to be loved by everyone. Do you have a plan in mind, darling, asked Zoe. Not at the moment, but remember the saying, the heavens are always watching. Levi replied with a smile. The charity gala was a success. Horace achieved two of his goals. One, to bring fame and fortune to Triple Group. Two, to send Oriental Star Group into chaos. The next day, Zoe arrived at work and noticed how gloomy the atmosphere was. Gary Wade and the others hadn't slept all night, so their eyes were extremely puffy. Everyone turned to Zoe for help. Evidently, the current situation was beyond their control. There was no way they could handle what was happening. Mr. Sean Timmons and a few screenwriters are here to see you, Ms. Lopez. The assistant said to Zoe. Let them in. Zoe knew what was about to happen. Sean Timmons walked into the office with over 30 other people following. Closely behind. Sorry, Ms. Lopez. We'd like to resign. We can't carry on working for Oriental Star. Group after what happened, he explained. Everyone else lowered their heads, feeling rather awkward. Zoe smiled. It's fine. You have every right to leave. I accept your resignation. Sean and the others were stunned. They didn't think she would let them go so easily. Over 30 directors, screenwriters and producers had just given in their resignation notice. These individuals were the foundation of Oriental Star Group. Aside from actors, they were the most important crew members when it came to making a film. That was right. Sean and the rest had been bought over by Maurice Lorraine. In fact, Horace had offered Sean 30 million to get everyone else to leave the company. Sean stopped by the special effects studio before leaving. Come with us, James. There's no point staying here with Oriental Star. Sean tried to convince the special effects team to join him. The head of the special effects department, James Wood, responded with a Smile, I'm good. You guys go on ahead. I'm indebted to Oriental. I've worked for many companies, but this is the only one that has ever treated the special effects team with respect and taken us seriously. I'll never leave, no matter what. You're just a stubborn old fart who refuses to change. Sean raged at him. You won't have it easy. He then walked away with his group. Come join us, Helena. You're famous now, so you shouldn't stay here anymore. The man tried to recruit Helena Engler too. With this, Horace would have to give me at least three million. However, Helena turned him down. I won't leave. I'll always stay with M.S. Lopez. Fine. You can keep giving yourself airs then. You'll only starve if you keep up. With that attitude. Sean sneered. Zoe was touched to see everyone who stayed. This crisis will be over real soon. Please trust me on this, she declared. She believed in Levi. If Levi said he could solve this, there was no doubt he could. After all, he had the mysterious owner of Morris Group backing him. He's omnipotent. If the man could easily deal with Scott Yates and Sebastian Lopez of South City, whatever Oriental Star Group was facing right now would be a piece of cake. The Protector Chapter 488 Maurice Lorraine was giddy with delight. The more viral he became, the higher his net worth got. Even his assets grew. Exponentially. Today, he and Sean Timmons, along with several others, had come to triple. 
group to sign their new contracts. Maurice immediately signed his contract without even going through it. Everyone else did the same, simply because joining Triple Group meant receiving money and fame. Sean and his group received a settlement fee of several hundred thousand just from joining the company. They, too, signed their contracts without even taking a look at the details. Horace couldn't help but laugh as he glanced at his several dozen new employees. Incredible. All of you are practically the foundation of Oriental Star. Group. You'll certainly go far by joining me. He then left with a smile. Maurice gathered everyone to discuss their future. Hey? There's something weird about this contract, exclaimed Steve White, a screenwriter. What's wrong? asked Sean and the others. Take a look at your own contracts. Something doesn't add up here, Steve. Urged. Everyone began to flip through their own contracts. Very quickly, a few screenwriters exclaimed, We've been tricked. This is like a slave contract. All of our reputation and copyrights will belong to Triple. We're practically their slaves now. And what's with the pay? I only get a fixed salary of 3,000 a month. Steve nearly passed out. He was the one who had written the script for the two major films from before. And Zoe Lopez rewarded him 5 million for that. Yet, he was going to be paid a mere 3,000 a month while working for Triple Group? Who could ever accept such a difference? SH T, mine's a slave contract too. They've deprived me of all my rights. And I'm only paid 8,000 a month. Sean was about to lose it. He had earned 8 million from directing the two previous films. Now, he was going to receive 8,000 instead. The other screenwriters shared the same contracts. They were all subject to become triple group slaves for life. Hurry up and take a look at my contract. Even Maurice had started to panic. Steve went through Morris's contract and remarked, Yours is pretty much a slave contract too, but it's slightly better than ours. However, you'll only get a payment of at most a hundred thousand for each movie though. What? A hundred thousand? Maurice was about to go insane. Only a hundred thousand for each movie? This is madness. Everyone quickly realized that they had been duped. Triple Group had offered them benefits at the start and allowed them to sign their contracts while their guard was down. Let's terminate our contracts. How can we ever agree to this? Maurice trembled in anger. Steve delivered a cold, hard truth. We'll need to cough up a hundred million as penalty for breaching our contracts, as for yours, it will be a billion. Boom. Maurice slumped to the floor. One billion? I only have a few million at most. Where will I ever get a billion? Sean was hopping mad. F asterisk CK. Why'd you do this to us, Maurice? You son of a... B asterisk TCH. We were doing so well at Oriental. I've never made more money anywhere. Else than when I was working for them. He's right, Steve chimed in. A screenwriter never earns more than 500. Thousand for writing a script, but Oriental paid me 5 million. He began to sob. Everyone else followed suit. What they felt at that moment was regret. They truly regretted. Wasn't it great working for Oriental? Why did we have to join Triple? Now look at us. We're doomed. We're going to be Triple Group slaves for the rest of our lives. The Protector Chapter 489 Just a while ago, they had even laughed at Helena for being stubborn. Thinking about it now, the woman certainly made the right choice. Sean whacked his own forehead. I should have known. Triple Group is ruthless. And greedy. They've had their dark past dug up in recent years. There's no way. We'd ever get a single cent out of them. We were too naive. Steve dashed their hopes even further. Most importantly, we can't reveal any of 
this. The contract says we'll end up in jail if we expose what's happening. Everyone gasped. Horace Waller, you're an abomination. Maurice kicked the door as tears streamed down his face. At that moment, the door opened and Horace walked in. Behind him were about a dozen bodyguards watching over his safety. So, you've read your contracts, I presume. Horace smirked insidiously. I'm taking you down with me, Waller. Maurice rushed toward him, only to be held back by the guards. Sean scoffed, you're being way too underhanded, don't you think, Mr. Waller? This isn't an agreement at all. It's clearly a slave contract. Even though this was commercial hegemony on Triple Group's part, it would always be difficult to protect one's rights when contracts were involved. One could go to court for years, and it still wouldn't necessarily guarantee their victory. Especially when one was up against the almighty Triple Group. There was practically zero chance of winning a lawsuit against them. If you didn't like the contract, you could have chosen not to sign it. Did I ever coerce you into signing it? Horace remarked. I. Everyone suddenly fell silent. What he said was true, Horace didn't force them into signing their agreements at all. But I wouldn't have signed it had I known what kind of contract it was. You. Tricked us. Sean raged. Horace smiled. Did I not let you read your contracts? You could have chosen not to. Sign them if you didn't agree, but did you even read the terms? I certainly gave. You ample time to go through the details. Sean was so exasperated that he felt like coughing up blood. They had all signed the contracts without going through the details, simply. Because they believed in Triple Group's power and wealth. Who would have thought that it was all a trap? Of course, you can leave if you want. Just pay your penalties and I promise. You'll be free, Horace chuckled. Silence ensued. Who would ever have that much money? Horace smirked triumphantly. If you can't pay up, you'd better obey me and serve Triple Group well. Maurice was livid. Do you think that we're your dogs? Are you not? Remember, you're Triple Group's dogs now. Do your jobs well and maybe you'll get to eat some bones. Ha ha ha. Horace was beyond delighted. Spending just a few million to obtain a group of slaves who would rake in billions. For the company was a genius idea. He had practically bought over an entire entertainment company. Be a thump. Everyone fell to the floor after Horace left. What should we do now? Are we really going to be their dogs until the day we die? Steve asked in misery. No one would accept such an outcome. Everyone was now at the peak of their careers, why would they ever allow themselves to work like dogs? I've got it. Maurice suddenly exclaimed. Everyone turned toward him. We can ask Oriental for help. Let's get Zoe Lopez to pay for our penalties and hire us again. You're right. That's a great idea. There's a high chance she'll help us, since we can make money. The benefits outweigh the costs of breaching our contracts. After all. Besides, the company's in danger now that we've all left. She'll definitely agree to help us if we ask her to. The group headed toward Oriental Star Group under Sean's lead. The Protector Chapter 490 The staff of Oriental Star Group were puzzled. Just this morning, Sean had left haughtily with a bunch of other people. So, what is he doing back here now? Are they here to show off? It doesn't seem like it though. They look so tense, as though something bad has happened. Zoe's assistant immediately informed her about Sean's return. Hold them off. Don't let them come in, Zoe ordered. Levi had just texted her about what Maurice and the others had gone through. Sean and his group were stopped at the entrance. What's going on? Let us in. Don't you know who I am, Zane? Sean bellowed. At the security guard. 
Maurice chimed in, you're just a bloody security guard. What right do you have? To stop us. He despised those who worked as security guards and janitors. A few guards responded angrily, you're no longer an employee of Oriental Star. Group, so you can't enter however you please. You. Sean froze. He had submitted his resignation letter earlier this morning, so he was indeed no longer a company staff. However, Maurice scoffed arrogantly. Let me tell you this, you stinking guards. I'm here to discuss a project that's worth a few billion with Ms. Lopez. Do you think you can afford to waste my time? That's right, Sean and the others added. Who do you think you are? How? Dare you try to stop us? To think that these well-known directors were being held back by a few lowly security guards, their prides won't allow it. The guards refused to budge. You can't enter. Zoe had personally instructed them not to let anyone in. Thus, they had nothing to fear. So is it money that you want? Here. Take it. Infuriated. Maurice took out a stack of cash and slapped the guards across the face with it. You're nothing but some lowly security guards, and that's all you get to be your whole lives. The security guards fumed in anger but remained silent. It wasn't unusual for them to be treated this way. In the eyes of these white-collar elites, being a security guard was an inferior job. The men could only suppress their rage and do nothing. This was simply a common occurrence. What's going on? A voice suddenly rang out. It was Levi. Mr. Garrison. The guards' eyes lit up when they saw him. Their pillar of support was here. Levi got along well with all the security guards, whether they were from Morris. Group or Oriental Star Group. You're looking down on these guys? What's wrong with being a security guard? Are they inferior to you? Levi asked coldly as he stared at Sean and the others. I. Sean was at a loss for words. They knew how powerful Levi was. He was also Zoe's husband, so they dared not tick him off. Even Maurice was holding himself back. We still need Zoe Lopez's help. We can't piss him off. Apologize, Levi demanded. Everyone in the group exchanged glances. Did we hear wrongly? Apologize to these lowly guards? Who do you think we are? I said apologize to them, or get out of here. Levi ordered. Fine. Just bear with it. Sean gritted his teeth and said with a bow, I'm sorry. Sorry. Steve and the others apologized too. Maurice did the same. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have disrespected you. The security guards were pleasantly surprised. These famous stars and directors are actually apologizing to us? It's fine. It's fine. They quickly waved their hands. Levi turned to the security guard called Zane. Go give him a slap in the face. Hey. Zane was taken aback. He hit you with his cash, didn't he? It's not that different if you were to give him a slap now, Levi pointed out. The Protector Chapter 491 Don't push your luck, Garrison. Maurice roared. Levi merely raised his voice. Go. Slap him in the face. Zane broodingly walked toward Maurice. Maurice was filled with rage. How am I going to hold my head up high after being slapped by a security? Guard? Sean and Steve held onto Maurice while giving him glances, signaling him not to move. Hit him. Levi ordered. With that, Zane violently slapped Maurice across the face. In an instant, Maurice's head spun as his vision blurred, and half of his face turned numb. The sensation was quickly followed by pain. It felt as though he was being pricked by needles continuously. Everyone was dumbfounded. The huge celebrity, Maurice Lorraine, had just been struck by a security guard. Maurice glared at Zane and Levi ferociously, as though he wanted to eat them. 
alive. What a disgrace. This is way too humiliating. Levi asked coldly, do you accept what just happened? I I do. I hit him with my money and he slapped me in the face. It's a fair trade. Maurice replied while clenching his teeth. All right, so what do you guys want? Levi asked. Haven't you quit already? Why? Are you here again? Sean quickly explained, we have something important to discuss with M.S. Lopez, Mr. Garrison. Please let us in. And what is it about? We'll talk about it when we see Ms. Lopez, Sean answered with a smile. It's something that will benefit the company. Levi returned a smile. I'm sure you know how busy Ms. Lopez is. Not any Tom. Dick and Harry gets to meet her. You should leave. What are you talking about, Garrison? I just got slapped and you're chasing us. Away now? Who the hell do you think you are? Maurice just about had it. He's right, Mr. Garrison. Be reasonable. Sean chimed in. We stopped picking. On the security guards out of respect for you. Shouldn't you show us some? Respect too. In other words, they had apologized not because they knew they were wrong. They only did it to make Levi happy. Levi was furious. Who the hell do you think you are? Why should I show you any? Respect. Maurice had lost all his patience. And who the hell do you think you are? Garrison? You're just a nobody if you weren't Ms. Lopez's husband. Slap. Levi sent two of Morris's teeth flying with just one slap across the face. A bright red handprint immediately appeared on the latter's cheek. Maurice was completely taken aback. Just one slap was almost enough to kill him. You dare hit me, Levi Garrison. Maurice was so livid that he could kill someone. What's wrong with that? A foul mouth deserves a slap, no. Levi asked. I dare you to hit me again. Maurice roared. Levi was amused. Guys, have you ever seen someone ask to be hit? Ha ha ha. The security guards burst into laughter. Levi instantly delivered another slap across Morris's face. The left side of Morris's face instantly swelled up and the slap marks looked. Especially distinct. The man was utterly floored. Everyone else couldn't believe their eyes. You're the one who told me to hit you, Levi said with a grin. I was just granting. Your wish. Maurice Lorraine is being attacked. Come and watch. Hurry over and witness this. Someone's attacking the superstar, Maurice. Lorraine. Isn't there anyone here who stands with justice? Tricia Sullivan and Wilford Boyd suddenly began to cry out. Passersby swarmed over upon hearing it was Maurice Lorraine and glared at it. Levi. How dare you attack my idol? Someone call the cops. The Protector Chapter 492. Over a hundred people showed up in a blink of an eye. Everyone immediately assumed Maurice was the victim after seeing the piteous state he was in. They began to confront Levi. At this very moment, Zoe walked outside. What's going on? We wanted to talk to you, Ms. Lopez, but your husband kept stopping us and he even attacked Maurice. Your security guard also slapped Maurice in the face. Shifting the blame onto the innocent now, hey? Zoe smiled. And? You know what could happen, Ms. Lopez, said Sean. Your husband's going to be in a world of trouble if word gets out. He had struck a celebrity, for God's sake. He might even end up in jail. What should I do then? Zoe asked. To be completely honest with you, Ms. Lopez, we've been tricked into signing a slave contract with Triple Group. We want to leave, but there's a huge penalty to pay. Sean trailed off. Zoe chuckled. So you're saying you want me to pay for the penalty and buy you guys over? The entire group nodded fervently. That's right, 
Ms. Lopez. We did some calculations. All the penalties add up to exactly two billion. It's actually not a lot. Think about it, wouldn't it be a breeze to gain back the two billion if you had such a great team like us and a brilliant actor like Maurice? He's right. I believe we'll be able to earn you two billion in just a year. They were full of confidence thanks to the two films that had been released. Maurice walked over to Zoe while covering his face. The company is now in. Chaos after we left, isn't it, Ms. Lopez, he said with a smile. Without us, it'd be tough for you to form a new team so quickly. I'm presenting you with an opportunity right now, we'll come back if you agree to pay for our penalties. With us back, we'll bring your company profits beyond your imagination. Not only that, but I'll also even let go of the fact that your husband attacked me. Maurice was full of conceit. They had originally come over to beg Zoe for help, but now he made it seem like Zoe was the one having to do the pleading. Trisha and Wilford chimed in, it's a win-win situation. We're giving you a chance. The only question now is, are you going to take it? Gary Wade and the others wanted to throw up upon hearing that. You're the ones who'd racked your brains trying to find a way to come back, but... Now you're talking about giving Ms. Lopez a chance? Could you all be any more shameless? Everyone's eyes were on Zoe, waiting for her answer. To Maurice and the group, Zoe would definitely agree to their proposal. It wasn't just because Oriental Star Group couldn't do without them. She also had to say yes for Levi's sake. I refuse. You're no longer part of my firm, so your problems have nothing to do with me. Besides, we have a rule of not working with traitors. Have a good day. With that, Zoe turned and walked away. Job well done. Levi nodded in approval. Zoe had changed rather drastically throughout this period. She was now much firmer in terms of her work and personality. What? Did she just turn us down? Maurice and the rest of them were flabbergasted. Sean was filled with disbelief. Do you not care if your husband's fate, Zoe Lopez? Maurice yelled. Just you. Wait and see how I'm going to make your husband suffer. Sean and Steve quickly stopped him. Don't do anything rash, Maurice. Remember what we're here for. Yet. We should behave ourselves. We're here to ask for Ms. Lopez's help, not. To threaten her said the others. The Protector Chapter 493 Maurice glanced at Levi, who was standing nearby, and said, then we'll give it. Another try. If she turns us down again, I'm going to send Levi Garrison behind. Bars. Levi calmly took out his phone and dialed a number. It's about time to destroy. Maurice Lorraine. Ha 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 ha. The people next to Maurice burst into laughter when they heard Levi's words. Is he an idiot? Does he really think he can ruin a celebrity with just a phone call? Who's he trying to kid? Maurice glared at Levi coldly and smirked. I'd like to see how you plan to do that. Very quickly, all the major media outlets fought to report the following news. Famous celeb Maurice Lorraine's private life exposed spotted sharing hotel room with two women horace waller had arranged for someone to secretly follow maurice that very night pictures and videos of the incident immediately surfaced netizens were in complete shock morris's dark past surfaced as quickly as he shot to fame another heavyweight news article made headlines maurice lorraine dumped girlfriend of seven years was abusive and made her sign an agreement to keep relationship secret. More scandals began to surface, such as news of Maurice fooling around with multiple women at nightclubs. The media outlets also released articles clarifying that Maurice was once taken in by Oriental Star Group while job hunting, the company had offered him a contract worth 500,000. Everyone now understood Maurice's true character. 
so he betrayed Oriental after everything they've done for him? Despicable. What an ingrate. He dumped his girlfriend after becoming famous and bit the hand that fed him. I wondered why this guy kept trying to make Oriental look bad. Now I get it. The internet was now filled with comments antagonizing Maurice. The man's reputation as a celebrity instantly hit rock bottom. It's over. It's all over. Maurice was completely dumbstruck once he found out what just happened. How could this happen, he looked up and yelled at the top of his lungs. His phone rang at the same time. It was the bank's calling to tell him that all of his accounts had been frozen. This was also Horace Waller's doing. Maurice Lorraine was completely finished. The only choice he had left now was to serve Triple Group as a slave for the rest of his life. Levi walked over with a smile. It's as easy to tear you down as it is to raise you up. Thump. Maurice flopped to the ground and stared at Levi in disbelief. He really did it with one phone call. For the very first time, Sean and the others realized how frightening Levi was. This is too much. We're sorry, Mr. Garrison. Sean, Steve and the rest of the group knelt on the ground. We promise to serve Oriental Star Group for the rest of our lives if you and M.S. Lopez redeem us, Mr. Garrison. They bowed with their heads directly touching the floor. Levi scoffed. Didn't you hear what my wife said? She never works with traitors. Boom. Levi's response struck them like lightning. Their lives were over. Taking care of Maurice indirectly restored Oriental Star Group to its glory. Levi returned to Morris Group. Where have you been, Mr. Garrison? You've been away for so long. Seth. Wilson and the other security guards greeted him with a smile. Iris Annabelle happened to spot Levi at the same time. Where'd you disappear? Two? You didn't even ask for a leave of absence. Iris looked rather upset, as though something had happened. Levi asked immediately, is something wrong? Iris hesitated for a moment before nodding. Yeah. The Protector Chapter 494 What happened? Levi asked. Iris rubbed her temples. Didn't the big boss tell us to organize a one billion charity program recently? We built the Hope Elementary School, old folks. Home and orphanage. We funded many poor students too. Yet, after pumping in our money and doing all this, someone else ended up taking all the credit. Levi was stunned. How could such a thing happen? Someone actually made an issue out of charity money? He frowned. Who did it? They sure have some nerve. It was Triple Group. They organized that one billion charity gala two nights ago. And not a single cent came out of their own pockets. They took the money we contributed for the charity program and made it theirs. All the charity certificates, documents and processes ended up becoming theirs. Iris was utterly furious. And so was Levi. So we paid for the charity event but they get all the credit? And now everyone thinks that Triple Group is the one being charitable and that it has nothing to do with us. Exactly. Triple Group is getting so much positive feedback from it. All the students and old people we've helped are sending them appreciation banners. The school, orphanage and old folks home are now hanging posters on the wall. Thanking Triple Group for their kindness. Nobody knows that we're the ones who actually came up with the money. Most importantly, we asked the charity association why this was happening, but they refused to acknowledge our contributions. They said everything about the charity program was done by Triple. The woman fumed in anger. Bang! Levi landed a fist on the wall. Iris jumped in fright. This is unacceptable. They're even trying to interfere with a charity program. How shameless can they be? Levi raged. The fact that Triple Group could do all this had to be because everything was 
agreed upon with the charity association. That's not all. I know that Triple's general manager's been involved with a few. Fourteen-year-old girls. Ugh. How I want that scumbag gone. Iris added. A cold look flashed in Levi's eyes. Now that he's pissed me off, I'm going to. Make him pay. Iris glanced at the man's stance. Does he think he's some boss? I'm about to personally head over to the charity association and find out what's going on. The more she thought about this, the more exasperated she felt. Okay. I'll come with you, Levi responded. They soon arrived at the Northampton Charity Association building. Hello, do you have an appointment? Yes. It's under Iris Annabelle of Morris Group. Aware of Iris' status, the Charity Association assigned a high-ranking director, John Harvey, to attend to her. Hello, Ms. Annabelle. How may I help you? John asked with a smile. Iris got straight to the point. I'm here for just one thing today, and that is to look into the donations made by Morris Group for the charity program. Oh? Has Morris Group contributed to the program recently? John asked. Perplexed. Levi chuckled. They're all playing dumb. Iris suppressed her anger and remarked coldly, Morris Group has made a one billion contribution to your association eight days ago. How could you, as a director, not know about this? John Harvey merely smiled. Sorry about that, Ms. Annabelle. I've been abroad for a while so I really have no idea about this. Give me a moment to look into this matter. The Protector Chapter 495 After making a phone call, John turned to them. Have you perhaps been mistaken, Ms. Annabelle, he asked with a smile on his face. The only one billion donation we've received is from Triple Group. There are no records of any contributions made by your company. What the what on earth are you talking about? That one billion came from Morris Group, but you wrote it off as triples? What the hell is going on? Iris was so livid that she nearly cussed. Please calm down, Ms. Annabelle. We really have no records of any donation. You've made. John replied with a pretentious smile. Then tell me what this is. Iris slammed some documents of the donation made in front of John, along with the company's proof of having set up the charity program. John went through the documents and said in confusion. This can't be. How could these records be exactly the same as triple groups? Even the charity program is completely identical. You wrote your own company's name over triples, didn't you, Ms. Annabelle? Iris was about to go insane. How shameless can they be? Now they're making it seem like we're the guilty ones. Besides, Triple Group really did host the charity gala recently and donated one billion during the conference. It was their money, what does it have to do with Morris Group? Even I'm starting to wonder if you're harboring any ill intentions. Ms. Annabelle. John appeared confident that the money belonged to Triple Group. Ha. Huh. Well then, since we have all the bank transaction records, how about we? Use them to find out who donated the money. Iris suggested with a smirk. Let's head to the bank right away, Mr. Harvey. Then we can make some comparisons. With your finance department. John's expression took a turn at the mention of the bank. He began to ask, before that, may I ask why you donated the money in the first place, Ms. Annabelle? To help people in need, of course. Iris answered. That's right. The purpose of the Charity Association is to help others, and since we've achieved this goal, does it really matter who was the one who helped? The man proceeded to poison the well in an attempt to make Iris look bad. Don't. People show acts of kindness and anonymity nowadays? Are you donating money? Just for the fame, or for an award or certificate? 
I'm really starting to question your motives now, Ms. Annabelle. Since it's all about charity, does anything else matter? As long as our goals are met? So what if the money came from Morris Group? If you insist on taking the credit that much, fine. I'll send you a pile of certificates. You. Iris felt rage flowed through her like lava. Yes, the goals have been met. We don't care about the fame either. But there's no way I'd allow Triple Group to take the credit. Clap, clap, clap. Levi couldn't help but clap his hands. You sure have a way with words. Claiming the moral high ground now, are you? Levi said, smirking. John scoffed, what do you mean by claiming the moral high ground? This is how. Charity has always been, if everyone only contributes for the fame, they're better. Off not contributing at all. Honestly, it doesn't really matter who donated. Levi raised his voice. Does that mean you can write someone else's donation off? As triple groups? Who gave you the right to do that? I. John wanted to say more, but Levi cut him off. If the credit doesn't matter, why? Does triple group need it then? They announced the news everywhere and even. Hosted a charity gala. That's not the same. Triple group needs the credit. John replied with a smile. The Protector Chapter 496 So Morris Group doesn't need it, but Triple Group does? Such double standards, Levi scoffed. Triple Levi cut John off again. I want to know who gave you the right to write Morris Group's contribution off as Triple Groups. That's some serious power right there. Changing a one billion project just like that. Levi arrived at the root of the problem with his sharp words. John was overwhelmed. Who is this man, Ms. Annabelle? Are you both here just to stir up some ruckus? So you want to look into the internal affairs of the charity association that badly? He raged. Sure. Why don't we investigate? Levi replied coldly. Get them out of here. John wasn't having it anymore and immediately ordered someone to take them. Away. But Levi persisted. No. I have to find out exactly what's going on. How did? Morris Charity Program end up becoming triples. John was beyond livid. So what if I don't admit it was Morris? What can you do? About that, even if I say it's been written off as triples. Levi's lips curled into a profound smile. Fine. Don't regret it then. Me? Regret? Ha. Huh. I'm going to say this one more time. Triple Group's the one. Who donated the money and it has nothing to do with you. Send them out. Iris and Levi left the building. You see that? I can't believe that's how the charity. Association behaves. Iris lamented with a wave of her hand. I have to go back. And ask Mr. Atkinson what to do. We can't just leave things this way. The two returned to Morris Group. Levi headed to his own office and contacted his secretary, Aurora Newt. Aurora, who's the person in charge of the Northampton Charity Association? He asked. The president is Mr. Sanford Collins, sir. All right. Tell him to come over. I have something to discuss with him. Levi sounded as cold as frost. It didn't take long for Sanford Collins to arrive at Morris Group with several other high-ranking associates. The five of them stood inside the office with their heads lowered and covered in cold sweat. They didn't even dare to wipe at their foreheads. The man sitting before them was way too intimidating. He's not just the deputy of Northampton, he's the god of war. How did Scott Yates die? It was thanks to this man. And why has Triple Group suddenly appeared out of nowhere to do whatever? They please in Quebec? It's mainly because Scott Yates, the man who had been keeping a tight rein on. Triple Group, is no more. This is the man who had single-handedly gotten rid of Scott Yates. 
Do you know why I've called you over? asked Levi. Sanford Collins and his men exchanged glances before shaking their heads. No. We don't, Mr. Garrison. You don't? Then do you know where you are right now? Levi tapped his desk with his knuckles. We're inside Morris Group. Ah. Is this perhaps about Morris Group's charity? Program. Being the smart man that he was, Sanford quickly grasped the situation. So, you do know why you're here, Levi said coldly. Tell me what's going on, he said with a smirk. How did the money Morris Group donated for the program end up as triple groups? Suddenly, his expression took a sharp turn. I was just at the charity association. To ask about this, but they insisted the money came from Triple and even chased. Me out of the building. Boom. Levi's words struck them like lightning, instantly petrifying them. Thump. Sanford lost his balance and staggered to the floor. Seriously? This man got kicked out of the charity association? Who had such nerve to do that? The Protector Chapter 497 This is blasphemy. It's over. The shit's about to hit the fan now. Sanford breathed deeply and said, We had no idea such a thing happened, Mr. Garrison. Levi tapped on his desk again. That's the second issue. Let's talk about the first. If I don't get a good answer from you, I'm going to start looking into it on my own. The men nearly coughed blood out of fear. Look into it on his own? Jesse Nielsen's going to ruin us before that happens. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything. Sanford jumped in and explained himself clearly. It was the general manager of Triple Group from Arudaya, Horace Waller, who came looking for me. He told me to put Morris Group's one billion donation under Triple Group for the charity program. I did it only because he promised to donate two billion to Northampton in the future. Levi smirked. He promised to donate two billion? Did you sign an agreement? With him? No. It was a verbal agreement, Sanford answered. But he's the general manager of Triple Group so I believe he's a man of his word. Bang! Levi slammed his hand onto the desk. Sanford and his team nearly wet themselves. So you'd believe whatever people tell you? Are you AF asterisking elementary school? Student, he roared. I'm sorry, Mr. Garrison. I was wrong. I shouldn't have believed him. Sanford immediately got down on his knees. Let's go. We're going to check the Charity Association's records. Levi. Demanded. Sanford immediately agreed. Understood, sir. We'll head over at once. Iris saw Levi bringing a group of men over to her just as she hung up a call with. Kieran. Sanford said to her, Hello, Ms. Annabelle. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm. Sanford Collins. President of the Charity Association. I'm here to apologize and request you to come with us to the association to settle some matters. Iris was dumbfounded. I just called Mr. Atkinson half an hour ago to ask for help, and the president of the Charity Association is here apologizing to me already? Just how powerful is this mysterious boss? Incredible. Iris admired this unknown man so much that she was now thinking of him as a lover. Everyone quickly headed toward the charity association once again. Get John Harvey to attend to me. Levi ordered the front desk receptionist. It didn't take long for John to angrily show up with a group of bodyguards. What? Must you insist on causing trouble, Morris Group? I kicked you out just a while ago. John raged. Levi scoffed. What's this? Is this how you attend to a guest? Who the F asterisk CK do you think you are that I have to attend to you? You wanna die? John bellowed at him. What's your problem? Why are you acting like such a tyrant? Iris argued. 
Am I not allowed to check your accounts? My company gave you a 1 billion donation, for crying out loud. No. John turned her down right away. From now on, no one from Morris Group gets to step into this building. We won't accept your donations either. What a bold statement. You must think you're so formidable, Iris remarked. That's right, the other directors began to speak out. We're the ones who have the final say in Northampton's charity industry. If you have a problem with that, that's too bad. Levi shook his head in frustration as he glanced at these men. So this is how the charity association normally behaves. And it looks like these directors really gain a lot from their work. With one glance, Levi easily noticed that quite a few of these men wore luxury. Watches that was worth millions. How dare you! An explosive roar erupted in the lobby. It was Sanford Collins, president of the charity association. The Protector Chapter 498 UF asterisking it's you, Mr. Collins. John immediately paled in fright as he gazed at the group of men in disbelief. Mr. Jung? Mr. Yeager? What are you all doing here? John and the other directors were beyond horrified. Humph! The company would have been shut down if I weren't here. Sanford said. With fury. Hey? That can't be, Mr. Collins. Why would the charity association be shut down? John smiled sheepishly, not realizing that the man standing right in front of him was capable of tearing the entire company down if he wanted to. You're all fired. You'd better prepare for all the investigations you'll all be going through. Sanford said coldly. Boom. What? John and the other directors felt as though they had just been struck by lightning. Sanford then turned to the four vice presidents behind him. When this is all over, we'll have to resign and go through the investigations too. We understand, the vice presidents immediately agreed. This was the best way for them to save themselves. John and his team were even more astounded. Who on earth is behind Morris Group that our president is voluntarily resigning? All right, let's go check the records. Stop dilly-dallying, said Levi. Yes, Chief. Sanford and his men immediately lead the way. Iris stared intensely at Levi. He's actually acting all tough. The only reason why he got to put on such a show was because of Mr. Atkinson. And they're calling him Chief? What a pretentious guy you are, Levi. The truth unveiled itself not long after everyone arrived at the charity association. The one billion donation was indeed from Morris Group. It had nothing to do with Triple Group at all. I believe I don't have to tell you what to do next, Levi remarked. Not at all, Chief. I'll take care of everything. Sanford instantly arranged for an announcement to be made, confirming that it was Morris Group that had donated the money. Then, he contacted all the publishers and large media outlets to report Morris Group's acts of charity. He also presented Morris its rightful award and certificate. I don't actually need these things, but you'll have to prepare them. They're all part of the legal process. Levi glared at Sanford, causing the latter to tremble in fear. By the way, let the world know that Triple Group never donated a single cent. During the charity gala, the man instructed. Triple Group's thinking of gaining without even doing anything? Like that'll happen. Uh huh. Sanford hesitated for a moment. After all, Triple Group was a powerful foreign corporation. This was certainly a tough matter to deal with. Hmm. Levi hummed coldly. I'll take care of it right away. Triple Group was nothing compared to this man, after all. Very quickly, all the large media outlets began to ask the following, when will Triple Group donate to the charity program? Is it really for charity, or are they doing it just for clout? Even the Charity Association confirmed what was going on. Hence, 
the news quickly spread across Northampton. So Triple Group is nothing but a scam? Didn't they donate a billion during the charity gala? The guys from Triple Group are nothing but leeches. It was Morris Group's money and it ended up becoming theirs. How shameless. They even slandered Oriental Star Group that night. What a bunch of dogs. The tide quickly turned. Triple Group was now in crisis after having its reputation destroyed. Meanwhile, inside the office of Triple Group in Northampton, Horace Waller was smoking on a cigar while looking extremely grim. Something's fishy. I discussed everything with Sanford Collins and bought over a few of his vice presidents and directors. Why is this happening? Horace was puzzled. At this very moment, someone from the Charity Association asked to meet him. The Protector Chapter 499 Hello, Mr. Waller. We won't force you to pay the one billion donation, but you've already made your decision that night at the Charity Gala, so I think it's best if you don't go back on your words. It'd be bad publicity for Triple Group otherwise. Horace gritted his teeth and paid up. He was fuming with anger. Triple Group never had any intention of paying such an amount. This was simply a loss resulting from not carrying out his tasks well. Bang! 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 Ori hit his desk in fury. Damn you, Morris Group! At that very moment, he received a phone call. The person on the line proceeded to chastise him. With a gloomy face, Horace silently listened to everything that was being said to him. Mr. Park Hagen will arrive in Northampton soon. You'll be in charge of welcoming him. Leave all of Northampton's matters to Mr. Park from now on. All you need to do is assist him. Horace's expression instantly took a turn upon the mention of the name. Park Hajin was the son of Park Cheon Shin, the regional manager of Triple Group in Arudaya. They were the direct descendants of the family that ruled Kiria's Triple Group and had control over all affairs in Arudaya. It was this father and son duo who caused Scott Yates to lose all his affiliations. Park Cheon Shin was someone who could go up against Scott Yates. His son was even more terrifying. Horace knew what Park Hajin was coming to Northampton for. That man was a complete deviant. At four o'clock in the afternoon, Horace waited at a highway intersection with a large group. A row of cars arrived shortly after. The second vehicle was a LaFerrari worth 40 million. The door opened and out came a young man in a suit. He had blue hair and his ears were pierced. A corner of his lips curled slightly as he stood in front of Horace. Welcome to Northampton, Mr. Park. Horace bowed and said with a smile. Yet, the Kyrian man suddenly grabbed Horace by the hair, pulling him forward. Horace cried out in pain. Pow! Hajin punched Horace in the face, blood immediately spurted everywhere. Pow! Bam! He continued his vicious assault on Horace. The poor man now looked like a complete mess. Wham! Finally, Hajin kicked Horace in the stomach, sending him flying eight meters. Backwards. The latter clutched his stomach and writhed in pain. This was exactly why Horace was afraid of Park Hajin. Fortunately, he was the general manager in Arudaya, and thus still of value to Triple Group. Otherwise, Hajin would have already sent him to meet with his maker. Trash. You're all trash. Hajin raged. What's the point of looking after trash like you? We lost one billion just like that. Not to mention Triple's reputation was tarnished. The man was so livid that he brought a few of Horace's men forward and proceeded to beat them up. It's all my fault, Mr. Park Hajin. I swear I'll gain back what we've lost. Horace. Promised while kneeling in front of Hajin. Then, he continued, I've also prepared a few lovely ladies for you, Mr. Park. They're all actresses who have recently made it big, such as Tricia Sullivan and Hazel Levine. 
Please enjoy your time with them. This was the only way to protect his own life. Park Hajin's temper died down slightly. Now that's what I'm talking about. Perhaps, not even Trisha Sullivan would have expected something like this to happen to her after betraying Oriental Star Group. Hajin suddenly remembered something. I heard that the most popular actress right now is Helena Engler. Her boss is a real beauty too. Uh-huh. I don't think I can do anything about that, Mr. Park. Horace began to tremble. Hajin scoffed. Then forget it. I'll take care of it myself. Remember this. North. Hampton is at the mercy of Triple Group. That's exactly why I'm here. The Protector Chapter 500 Park Hajin was extremely full of himself. However, Horace didn't question him at all. Because he knew what Triple Group was capable of. What Park Cheon Shin and his son were capable of. In fact, Park Cheon Shin and his son indistinctively held more power than Scott. Yates did. But why did they never confront each other head on? The main reason was that the losses were too huge, even if they would have won. It would be akin to killing a thousand of Scott's men but losing eight hundred of their own. Now that Scott's faction had collapsed, Triple Group stood alone and firm in Quebec. They could now do whatever they pleased. Triple Group had no issues taking over South City and ten other areas. The toughest nut to crack was Northampton. Park Cheon Shin had immediately sent his son over after Horace's screw-up. That night, Trisha Sullivan and the other women who had signed triple groups. Slave contracts were given hell. The next day, they were carried straight into the hospital. Horace shuddered at the news. Park Hajin was an absolute pervert who treated women like playthings. Many of them died. Those who didn't either ended up with depression or remained in the hospital. Maurice was petrified too. Hajin walked out and bumped into him. I heard you made it pretty big, but you're nothing but a street rat now. How are you even going to make me money? Hajin asked coldly. I can act, Maurice answered while trembling. I can shoot lots of movies. Slap, slap. Hajin patted the man's cheeks. Do you think anyone's going to watch your movies? I. Maurice froze on the spot. Twee. Hajin spat on the ground. Lick it up. I'm a guy who spits wherever I like. From now on, your job is to lick up. All of my spit, he said with a laugh. No. No. Maurice instantly paled. How could a celebrity like him do such a thing? Now. Hajin kicked Maurice to the ground. Maurice had no choice but to lick it clean. Hajin ended up spitting on the floor all day. Despair. Endless despair. Maurice would have remained a trending celebrity had he stuck with Oriental Star. Groob. His future would have been full of riches, glory, and splendor. Sadly, he could only go through such suffering now. At Bayview Garden. Iris picked Levi up for work in her Porsche. Zoe smiled helplessly. Her snobbish best friend was actually driving Levi to work. It must be because he's that charming. Zoe smiled. While driving, she suddenly spotted a Ferrari speeding recklessly on the left lane. Disregarding all traffic rules. All the surrounding vehicles tried to evade it. Those who didn't make it in time ended up crashing into other cars or the guard. Rails. What? Zoe's eyes widened in disbelief. The Ferrari suddenly turned to the right lane and began zooming toward her. Zoe wasn't driving slowly, but it was already too late to switch lanes. Crash. The two cars violently collided. The airbag was instantly deployed, protecting Zoe. No one was injured. However, the vehicles were a different story. The Ferrari's head had completely caved in, and Zoe's Audi RS7 was severely damaged too. Slam. The owner of the Ferrari got down. He looked extremely menacing with his blue hair and pierced ears. 
Behind the Ferrari were several other vehicles. Dozens of men in black began to exit and walk over. How the hell do you even drive? Park Hajin's attendant, Park Chongwook, ferociously gave Zoe's Audi a few kick. <laughs>